with a prayer for us um, to come to the full. Yourself? Oh, I thought your hand was up. Okay, ma'am, yes. All right. Yes, you can, you can come, it's fine. Lizali city gala ko ti kongo si e nyani iso zonkinta kaso ki. God, we just want to come and thank you for today, that we have the privilege of life, and that we can be here together as children of South Africa and children of our Heavenly Father, and just give you glory for being good, for being all-seeing Father, for being interested and in, intricately invo involved in each of your children's lives. I pray for wisdom. You say in your word you will give us wisdom without any um, prejudice. And I pray for wisdom for every person here today. I pray for our parliament in specific, that you will guide them in your spirit, Father. And may your name be glorified. May your kingdom come and may your will be done in all areas of our life and all aspects of South Africa. We honor you and we glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much um, for, the, for the prayers that you have um, done for us. We are at the city of Johannesburg today, um, proceeding with our public hearings on the Bella Bill. At this moment, I'm going to ask Umam Loiso Masuku, the MMC uh, from the city um, council, to welcome us. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson um, of the Basic Education Portfolio Committee, um, Honorable Bongiwe Mbiko Kikaba, members of the committee who are joining us, members of parliament, um, members of the provincial legislature, um, I've seen some chairpersons as well. Um, councillors of the city of Johannesburg, I see councillors present, uh, officials from parliament, all stakeholders without exception. Ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome. And I believe um, we are of the same mind and understanding that our presence here um, and deliberations that will unfold are part of the critical steps that are meant to really knock this bill into shape. Besides the fact that uh, this is prescribed in our constitution of our country, it's also a tradition that has been passed on generations by our people in this democratic government that consultations be done on anything that has an impact on our people. We all know that members of parliament are elected to be the voice of people. However, they are also expected to come back to us and as the people they represent so that they know our views on a range of matters. Therefore, this exercise is important and it makes certain that parliament is not seen as an ivory tower, but is an accessible institution and a true representative of the people. And this bill by other 
like other bills, but this one in particular is critical, as it will affect the shaping of the young minds of our country. It impacts on the future and should be considered of high importance. As you would remember, Nelson Mandela said, education is a great engine of personal development. It is through education that the daughter of a peasant can become a doctor, that the son of a mine worker can become the head of the mine, that the child of farm workers can become the president of a great nation. Let us mold this bill in such a way that it has positive results on those that it is meant to assist. Chair of, of the committee, it is public knowledge um, that our city has been going through changes and there is now a new coalition government of local unity. Let me take this opportunity to assure you that, assure you and the residents that this government of local unity is committed in maintaining a stable, functional, responsive and service oriented government. The stability and efficient functioning of the city is a priority to us and we will strive at all times to maintain decorum. We are making this commitment in front of you as members of parliament because we are also accountable and to the residents of almost six million residents in our city. Our city will be salvaged and become the true world African city it is. We commit to at all times maintain decorum, diligence and lead at a local level. We will not fail the residents and we are committed in building better communities. And as we build better communities, we are busy, Chair, with our own IDP processes in the city of Johannesburg, where we are busy consulting, and we encourage residents to continue attending. They were postponed, now they will be resuming next week. Those IDP sessions are important as, as they impact your lives as our residents. Diabule Salo, we welcome you to the city of Johannesburg. Namkele Gile Basal. Thank you very much, uh, Mama Suko. Uh, we are welcomed uh, in Jobek. Uh, the Portfolio Committee on Basic Education. I'm going to allow members to introduce themselves, um, starting from my far right, um, so that we, we know who is here. Thank you, Chairperson. Good afternoon to the members of Johannesburg Central. My name is Marina van Sel. I'm a member of this Basic Education Portfolio Committee in the Sixth Parliament, elected by the Democratic Alliance. Good afternoon, everybody. Dumelan, Molweni, Khwemirak. My name is Bakoli Leno Dada. I'm a member of parliament serving in the National Assembly. I'm deployed to the uh, Basic Education Portfolio Committee by the Democratic Alliance. Thank you. Goeiemiddag, Johannesburg. My name is Mari Soeker, ek is van die Westkaap. Ek dien op hierdie komitee en ek is represent die Afrika Christen Democratische Partij, African Christian Democratic Party, ICDP. A good afternoon, fellow South Africans. <clears throat> My name is Ronnie. My father's name is Muratseka. I'm a member of parliament in the National Assembly deployed by the African National Congress. <laughs> and further deployed into this all important portfolio committee on basic education. And my home is in Limpopo. Zanin is my town. Uh, good day, everyone. My name is Nombuiselo Adjons. I am the member of National Assembly and the, the member of this Portfolio Committee on Basic Education. 
ke romilwe ke mo khatlo mo tonna o busang wa batho ba bantsintsintsi fela ba tseisang sididi eh wa African National Congress ke le boga go mena ga Dumela my name is Tebo Kholitsie I'm from Gauteng I'm a member of the sixth parliament deployed to basic education portfolio committee and um, I'm deployed in parliament by the biggest organization in South Africa, the ANC. San Monani, Ikamalame Ngubafuze Yabo. I'm a member of the National Assembly and the sixth parliament. I'm also a member of this uh, Portfolio Committee on Basic Education. I am from Gauteng, and I'm deployed to Parliament by the oldest liberation movement on the continent of Africa, the African National Congress. Thank you very much. No, thank you very much. Um, to the members of the of the committee, um, I'm now going to call the new chief director from DPE, uh, new from the box, um, to come and do the aims and objectives of the bill for us, and then immediately after him. Um, Honourable Litsie, we will will handle the proceedings of of today. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honourable Chairperson, Honourable Members, um, the MEC, MEC, Councillor Loiso Masuku, members of the provincial legislature, councillors in Gauteng and also members of the Department of Education from National, members of the Gauteng Department of Education, uh, members of the community, good morning. Good morning. It is, it is a well, good afternoon. <laughs> uh, as the Education Department, we are the custodian of the education in the country. And this we do through an act. And the act that has been running education since 1986 is the South African Schools Act. But as time goes and time moves, some of the clauses in the act become redundant. So we are forced to move with the time as the education department and amend some of the sections of the South African Schools Act. Some of the things that compel us to make this amendment is the non-compliance to the, to the constitution of the country and the fact that the demographics of the country are also changing. So it means we needed to change. What you have in front of you is our proposal as the Department of Basic Education to Parliament to allow us to implement those changes. You have about 56 changes in your hand. We call them some, some prescripts. There are about 56, all, all in total. Now, we may not go through all the 56. You have them, you can go through them. But I want to look at some of those that are sort of sticky portions where there could be arguments and disagreement so that you can guide parliament when they have to approve or not approve this, this, this bill. The first one that I want to look at is an aspect that deals with Great R. Great R has not been part of our compulsory school going age. It has always been left outside the schooling system but slowly we introduce Great R into the school system but we still are unable to fund Great R. We still are unable to provide teachers for great R because it is not in the act. 
So we request in Parliament to give us permission to recognize grade R as a formal schooling grade where we can now appoint teachers and pay them and also be able to provide funding for it. So this is one of the things that we want to introduce in them. We want Parliament to look into the issues of code of conduct. Every school has a code of conduct, but not all code of conduct will comply to what the Constitution prescribes. So we're putting in that bill that the code of conduct needs to be looked into, and we, we're tabulating things that leads to what we can call serious misconduct in, 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 in the Act, so that when we deal with issues of abuse of learners, we, we, we have violence in schools and all those things, then SGBs are able to look into that and be able to, 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 to deal with such conditions. We're trying to indicate that some of the things that we find in the Schools Act are minor and, and waste a lot of time, where people will be prescribing things like hairs, and children get expelled from school because the hair doesn't prescribe to what the, 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 the school demands. So is these things that we're putting in the Act and say, can we control these things and make them something that will not prevent learners from going to schools. We, we want to introduce penalties because we have this compulsory schooling going age, which is going to start from grade R, and it will go up to the age of 15 or grade 9. But we have realized as, as the department that there are people that tend to prevent children from going to school, either in the form of boycotts and riots and closed down schools unnecessarily so. So we're requesting Parliament to give us permission that should there be people, individuals, that will prevent children from entering a schoolyard that we are allowed to call the S. SAPS and let them get arrested and the courts will then imprison them or fine them. So that is the request that we made so that we minimize these disruptions of education in our country. There are issues of the rationalization and closing of schools that are non-viable, that are dying naturally. They are not in the act. We requesting parliament to give us permission to allow us to give strategies and ways in which it could be done, guidelines on how you close or you merge a non-viable school. So for the first time, we'd like to put that in the act and give everybody an understanding on the consultation processes that needs to be followed and all the stops that need to be followed legally. When we deal with the code of conduct, you'll find that there are issues of corporal punishment that were not really defined in the previous South African Schools Act. Now we're trying to give examples of what corporal punishment mean and, and what are the issues that corporal punishment needs to cover. So this is in the bill. The bill acknowledges that when schools do their fundraising, they sometimes do sell alcohol as a form of fundraising. I'm talking about schools that have ability to have functions, whether it's a sports day, where they could put a group of parents aside, and as part and parcel of fundraising, they may be providing alcohols to that uh, excluded area, it doesn't mean the selling of alcohol to children, but it means the adults that are, are attending a particular function in a school. So this has been happening, but there was no law or guidelines on how this must happen. So we're asking through the bill that should a school want to provide alcohol to adults during functions, there need to be guidelines on how this must be done, and such a school must apply to the department that we have a function on this particular day, and during that function, we will be able to provide alcohol to the adults that are there, and therefore apply, and the department assesses on whether they are following the regulations correctly or not. So that is what we put in there, but you'll have to advise Parliament on whether that is allowed or not. There are a lot of challenges around the finances of schools. 
and these challenges emanates from we know we all live in this country that that there is a lot of corruption going on we want to ask parliament to give us permission that if you are a governing body and you are drawing a budget you need to inform the parents of the school about every activity which has budgetary um, needs. For example, if you are going to be paying teachers under Section 38A, inform the parents that part of the school fees will go towards the payment off. So that it shouldn't be a secret. When you have an annual general meeting, we're asking that the SGBs must be transparent and be able to give all the information that is required there. We're requesting Parliament to allow us that should we see the need to investigate the financial circumstances of a school, we should be allowed to do that, to call any other officials from the law enforcement agencies to even investigate the financial matters of a school. That's what we're requesting. And we are requesting that when we deal with issues of finances, SGBs need to report to the department about those activities on a quarterly basis. At the moment, they only report annually, but we have realized that by the time they report annually, a lot has gone wrong in there and cannot be uh, rectified. Hence, we're requesting that can we see these financial statements on a quarterly basis. And those who serve in the SGBs, may we even know their financial status so that they declare them in advance because they deal with a lot of tenders and then we, not, we need to know their interests. Hence, we're asking that they declare their interests. We're requesting that we have SGBs having learners in them, but learners were never given clear guidelines on what their roles is and what is it that learners cannot do. Through this act, we're beginning to say learners must be in the SGB. You can't remove them. But even when they are in the SGB, they can't participate in appointments and they can't participate when you sign contracts, which has financial implications. But for the rest of the discussions, please put them in. So that is what you're going to find in the act. Now, because demographics are changing, more and more communities are getting inter integrated. There are two main things that we want to look at. That is the language policy and the admission policy. Currently, the language policy is determined by the SGB. The admission policy is determined by the SGB. We want to leave that responsibility still in the hands of the SGB with a rider. The rider being, should the language policy and the admission policy not comply with the constitution, we're asking the head of department to intervene in that regard. So the changes that are there are allowing us to deal with issues of those changes in demographics, to make sure language and admission do not become a stumbling block and block children that needs to keep there, and sort of safeguard the, the schools not to do gatekeeping, the powers are still in there. So when you read the proposal, the proposal are giving steps that should an SGB realize that the language policy or the admission policy is not in line with the constitution, the HOD will intervene by deal, working with the SGB, consulting with the community where the school is found. These are steps that you find inside the Bella bill that you're giving. So all we are asking is that the SGB cannot be the referee and the judge. They need to be somebody who needs to say, we're not agreeing with your code of conduct or the language policy. The Bella bill also contains issues of homeschooling. Homeschooling recognizes the fact that there are parents who don't feel comfortable to send children in public school. Homeschooling recognizes the fact that there are children that cannot cope in a public circumstances. Homeschooling is something that will continue because it's a democratic right of a parent to homeschool a child. But we're saying, should you decide to homeschool a child, do us a favor, inform the department that my child is not coming to you, will remain with me, and apply to the head of department that you want to do homeschooling. And as you do homeschooling, we want to ensure that we know the type of curriculum that you're offering. 
We're not choosing what curriculum you, you have to give. We're not telling you to do our curriculum. We're saying whatever curriculum you choose in the world, please inform us of what curriculum you're doing. And we also need to know, as time goes on, whether there is quality of teaching that is going on in your home. And then we ask that we get an independent assessor, who's not us, who's not anybody, but qualified people that can vouch that the child is receiving education. And we're also requesting that the Minister of Education be given authority to give us instructions on how to deal with pregnant learners in a school. At the moment, we're not refusing admission to school from pregnant learners, but there are no steps on how teachers can deal with those children when they are at a school. So we're requesting that the minister be given that authority to guide the teachers in a school how to deal with learners that are pregnant. Chairperson, thank you very much. That is the brief. Thank you very much, uh, DBE. Can we give him a round of applause? <clears throat> um, we are now starting with uh, the business of the day. There are some few ground rules or house rules that uh, we must lay out. This is a process of parliament, uh, meaning that uh, what you see in parliament will happen here. Yeah. Uh, we will allow all of you, those who want to speak, uh, to raise their hands. I'm going to note block by block. Uh, we'll start with one block, get 12 people. They will come and sit here. Uh, then they will come to the mic. We're giving you a maximum of three minutes. You don't have to take the whole three minutes. Uh, there are a few things that when we are speaking, we want to hear you say. One is that you must introduce yourself so that you are able to record who said what. Two, you must, either, you must also say you are either supporting or not supporting, or, or supporting or rejecting the bill. Um, and then uh, when your time is done, I'm going to time you, I'm going to tell you to stop if uh, you have exhausted your three minutes, uh, and then you are going to go back quietly to sit down. There are those who are like me who are shy, who don't like speaking, but who want their voices heard. You can write. There at the back there, there's a lady waving some forms. You see? You can quietly go to her, take the form and write. On the form, it will say you are either supporting or not supporting. You can't write and come and speak. You will choose one. You will either speak or you will go and write. Are we clear so far? Those of you, oh, there are people who may say things that you don't agree with. It's their right to say those things. When you come and speak, you can say things they don't agree with. But what we are not going to allow is for you to intimidate those who are saying things that you don't agree with. So here, democracy will uh, prevail. We will allow them to say what they want, as long as it's not offensive, it's not, uh, you know, we're not using uh, unparliamentary language. Uh, those of you who are out of order, we've got parliamentary protection services. Agari, those of you who watch that channel, you see that uh, sometimes uh, when uh, uh, members of parliament wants to be Spider-Man and all of that, we call them. Even here, uh, those of you who don't want to listen, they will be here to do what they normally do, but we hope that it does not get uh, to that part. <clears throat> Those of you who wants to, we've got a sign language uh, section there at the corner. Those of you who wants to be nearer, you, you'll tell me, 
Uh, if uh, we do have people who want to be near to the sign language people, uh, we will ask that uh, the people sitting in the first row there to take uh, another row, and then those people who want uh, access to sign language will then go and sit there. But you'll, you'll indicate if uh, we have such people. You can speak in any language you want. Uh, we do have a number of uh, interpreters on hand to interpret what we are saying. Um, we will use our discretion whether we must interpret this or not. So, uh, so on a more serious note, yeah, sorry, those who are going to fill in forms, you must fill in your names and ID numbers. Because we, we must verify that it's not one person who took 100 forms and said yes, 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 or no, 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 no. So we need your names and your ID numbers uh, so that we can verify that indeed we are not dealing with, uh, with robots. So w I'm going to um, ask parliamentary staff uh, to just uh, wave at you and then you clap for them. Parliamentary staff, wherever you are, including in the table. Can we wave at our people? <clears throat> we also have a, a DBE National and DBE and Department of Basic, or Department of Education in Gauteng. Wherever you are, please uh, stand up so that they can see you. From National, that then level your team, and uh, Gauteng. Uh, no, thank you very much. Um, so I'm going to start noting hands. I'm starting this side. Uh, and I'm going to try and cover as much as I can. Uh, my sister in black one, you'll come and sit here in the first seat. Number two, number three in green, number four, my brother. As I pointed to you, number five, the check. He must also come. Yeah, both of them, five and six. Yeah, five and six, Ariane. Brown, seven. Uh, eight, white T-shirt. White T-shirt, eight, come. Nine, yeah, you can come waving. You must sit, you see, uh, uh, I was going to jump you, but I decided to give you a chance. We must sit down now when we are raising our hands. No, no, she can come. Are you, are you a pair? No, no. Are you sitting there? Are you a pair? You are a pair? Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, my sister, yes? Here, Tlavo, no more. So, okay, I still have two. My sister, the brownish, yeah, yes? And then a gentleman with a head, yeah, all right. No, no, it's fine. I get more like one. So we're taking 12. No, no, both of them is fine. Number one, uh, let's go to the mic. And then uh, don't forget, you're introducing yourself. You indicate support, reject, and then you can say what you want. I'm going to time you for three minutes. Start. Okay. Okay. Um, my name is Nontlantla Shabalala. Section 6, language policy, must, be compel, must compel the language policy to have uh, three or more of indigenous South African language. Section 8, we don't support. We reject Section 8 in totality. Liqua Board Act number 59 of 2003, the distance between school and tavern shipping should be 500 meters. Generally upheld views by South African population is that schools should uphold high ethical and moral standards, and there, for selling liquor does not contribute to this mentioned social value. The monitors is putting teachers and principal extra job and don't have skills of breathalyzing tests. 
Section 18A, we reject disclosures of SGP. Section 38A, we reject. Such practice will encounter to take away the best teachers from those that can't afford extra remunerations. Okay. Yeah. I think I'm done. Uh, 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 I said when we get to the stage, one, we introduce ourselves, and two, we indicate whether we, are, we reject or we support the bill, and then we can go to uh, individual clauses. And you have not told us that whether you are rejecting or um, uh, supporting the overall bill. The overall bill. The bill. Yeah. I, sorry? We do support the overall bill. Thank you very much. Yes. Number two. Thank you very much, uh, Program Director. My name is Pexi Jafta. I am a SATU member. Uh, Chair, we are rising as SATU to support the Basic Education Laws Amendment Bill. Uh, we, however, want to indicate that um, we are doing this submission on, the, on behalf of 264 members of SATU and the millions of learners who do not currently have a voice to come here and express themselves. So we are doing that on, the, on behalf of them again. We also want to indicate that uh, SATU is um, a union that, is, that affiliates to Educational Interna uh, International Union, which is the largest, most representative global sectoral organization of union of teachers. Chair, on clause, clause, uh, clause 2B, on the responsibility of the parents, uh, which seeks to amend Section 3.6 of South African School Act, uh, we as SATU, we, we are indicating that the clause uh, that uh, seeks to increase the penalty and pro provision on Section 3.6 we are seconding it by allowing it for both the imposition of both fine and the sentence. We are, however, also adding our recommendation as follows. We are recommending that the current provision in the Act on the responsibility of the parent chairperson in terms of fines and imprisonment must be maintained and we must ensure that effective monitoring and enforcement of this provision is in place. We are also recommending that we should draw lessons from international practice in terms of compulsory education laws, which typically holds parents and guardians responsible for a child's attendance in school. We are also indicating that the penalty provision should consider socio-economic conditions, context, literacy levels, because some of our parents, they don't even know that uh, education is compulsory. So as and when that happens, that should also be taken into consideration. And also, we must also take into consideration the type of support needed before administering that penalty because we have different levels of parents. We are also indicating that an intense advocacy program to implement, to realize school attendance of learners must also be entrenched to parents, and also parents must be able to know what are the consequences of learners when they are not attending classes or school. We are also indicating to say maybe we must also be given truancy officers uh, to assist. Uh, thank you, thank you. 
Uh, our time has expired. Thank you very much, number three. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Valentin van der Merwe. I'm head of work school at Solidariteit School Ondersteuning Centrum, and I reject the current proposed ballot bill um, in its eternity. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as I stand before you today to express my deep concern over the proposed ballot bill, um, while the aim of the bill is to, prom to promote multilingualism in our schools, I believe that the state is not capable of taking full power and deciding which languages should be promoted. Instead, the community knows best what their preferences and needs are, and their right to choose should be respected. Statistics show that Isisulu is South Africa's biggest language, spoken by almost a quarter or 23 per cent of the population, and Isikosa is spoken by 16 per cent. Furthermore, with 12 per cent of the country speaking Afrikaans and only 8 per cent of the country speaking English as their home language, we cannot afford to ignore the importance of promoting mother tongue education of our diverse population. Unity within diversity is the motto of our country, and it is something that we must promote, not tear down. Language is a cultural right, and the multicultural nature of our country will be lost if all schools as a language of teaching of English. All learners have the right to mother tongue and education, and we must ensure that this right is protected and mother edu uh, tongue education is promoted. Moreover, the Act contains no provisions on online learning, and this is a critical omission that must be addressed before the law is passed. The, multi the multitude of comments already confirms this, and the law must be amended beforehand to ensure that our learners receive the best po possible education in, in the changing world we live in. In conclusion, I urge you to consider the implications of the billable carefully. We must protect the rights of our diverse communities, promote unity within diversity, and ensure that our learners receive the education they deserve. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next. San Bonan. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm a Kumalo, committee member, I was dating. I agree with this document. Though, I'm a good person, I'm a good Page four of this document. And uh, number 35 is talking about corporal punishment. Um, corporal punishment must be considered concerning number of languages that schools accommodate. That's my point there. Um, because everything that, uh, like uh, it says here, corporal punishment means any deliberate act against a child that inflicts pain or physical discomfort, however light, to punish or contain the child, which includes but is not limited to all this. But now, uh, something that I don't see here, uh, like uh, touch your toes, it's one of the corporal punishment that we used to get from our schools when we grow up. It's part of your punishment. And then page nine, number 35, uh, it's talking about the governing body of a public school may subject to sub, uh, sub section determine the language policy of the school. But now, uh, in this 13, it says 
provided that the language policy of a public school must be limited to one or more of the official languages of the Republic uh, as provided in Section 6.1 of the Constitution. Uh, in this section, provided that the language policy of a public school must not be limited. Actually, it must include three or more of the official languages, including the sign, uh, South African Sign Language. Um, yeah, I think I'm a puzzle, I mean, or, uh, yeah. Yeah, well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, wait a bit. So, uh, there was a, a little bit of Zulu. Uh, do you have a Zulu? Yeah. L let's go in, uh, summarize, because most was in English. Let's uh, summarize. I think just mention. First of all, he mentioned his name, that is Mbiake Kumalo, and in that clause, in page four, regarding corporal punishment, he also mentioned that it will be good to add just one thing, because one of the thing that is not here, when he looks here, it's the heating of a child right on the buttocks, so he feels that if that can also be added, uh, on this act, it can be useful. And he also touched on, on, the, on the language policy, and I think that one he mentioned on English. So that's, that's, that's the point that he mentioned, Chair. Okay, he, 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 at the beginning he said he supports the bill. You did not say so. <clears throat> let's, let's concentrate. Uh, next. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> My name is Ben Ferrara. I'm presenting FETSAS. Thank you for the opportunity. We partially support the bill. We're not totally against it, and I will indicate in three ways uh, what we see. What we are against is the whole principle of governing body members to uh, supply their whole financial position. We think this will in, uh, this encourage people to, st to make themselves available if their financial position is uh, widely recognized or available to other people. I heard what Mr. Ndlebe said about uh, the admi admission policy. It must be in line with the Constitution, but we are afraid that if the HOD get too much power, then the power falls away from the SGB to determine the language and the admission policy. Another thing to, to take in consideration is determining the capacity of the school. The SGB is the right persons in the right position to determine the capacity of the school. Where you've got a broader determination of that, you get the department saying, you've got 10 classrooms with 40 people, this is your capacity. And classroom sizes differ, and it's the best opportunity to leave that in the hand of the SGB to determine the capacity and then also the admission policy. Uh, there was a lot of references already today about the language policy. We feel that must be something in the, in the hands of the SGB. Take note that we don't have two languages in the country, Afrikaans and English. And that is what is happening, is that you can either choose between Afrikaans and English, and there need to be proper provision for mother tongue language, and that is where the SGB of that school plays an important role when determining the language policy. So we're against this thing that the HOD can intervene in this whole process. Then there are three matters or a couple of matters that we support in the bill. The whole thing about great R to make that compulsory. We wholly support that principle and it's a thing that is long outstanding and we support that article in the bill. 
The next thing that we do support is that there must be uniformity, guidelines, and rules for election of governing bodies. At this stage, we've got nine provinces, nine regulations, and there's no uniformity in the guidelines for election of SGB members, and we, we call on that. Two things that we need to, in this bill is yeah. a clear definition of meetings. I see my time is running yes. out. No, no, it's run out. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. You said you partially support. Next. Honourable Members of Parliament, Mr. Chairman, Cornelius Oersteisen, proud but concerned parent. We reject the South African Schools Act proposed amendments in totality, and also in specific the amendment pertaining to language policy changes. That in short, also, the citizens of South Africa reject your notions of dictatorship. I thank you. Thank you very much. Totally reject. Next. Um, my name is Apiwa Sinege. I am from Watt 19 in Clip Town. So I'm just um, a young person passionate about education. So in terms of, I, first I support the proposed bill with few requests for reviews, specifically on um, issues of corporal punishment. I feel that instead of um, you know, continuously upholding to corporal punishment and so forth, there are qualified social workers within our countries who can be delegated to different schools to deal and assist with issues of behavior. Um, because um, because uh, corporal punishment is in conflict with the Children's Act. And the second part of it is uh, the deployment of social workers within our school can also assist with issues of ghost learners that we have within our respective districts. And then um, with regards to um, alcohol being sold in events within our schools, I'm completely against it. I feel this is just um, showing um, disrespect and how we can disregard education um, within our country. So rather should any party be keen to have beverages uh, sold for any purpose, whether it's fundraising or what, that can be done somewhere in the parks, you know? And lastly, I am pro the notion of um, different languages being introduced to schools, and I feel that can be guided by the demographic within the geographic location of those schools. Thank you. Thank you. Next. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm not sure whether it's still morning or it's day or it's afternoon or it's evening. Okay, yeah, sure. This is uh, Soli Matupa coming from Satu. And then as to we are actually supporting the bill. And then as such, but there are some, fine, some of the things that need sort of a fine tuned such that the bill come out excellently, especially in terms of uh, the issues of uh, monitoring of learners. Monitoring of learners, attendance. You know, there is a, we left the participation of the community there because 
if you are operating in a public school, you will realize that uh, before some of these learners entered the school premises, they are actually they via through a lot of uh, dangerous zones, and then as such, the concept of a uh, conscientization of the community in terms of assisting these learners in relation to the culture Q QLTC, the culture of learning and teaching. And then as such, we must make sure that you know, the community is also conscientized in participating in the conscientizing of these learners and also accompanying them when they actually to and fro school. They are not on their own. Okay, and also the question of uh, response in terms of uh, registration of learners. We think the, 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 the question of response from if the learner is rejected in a school, we think 14 days is too long. We, we know the queue may be long, but uh, if the time frame can be reduced such that at the end of the day, the, the time is not wasted for the learner to be in class while we are still dealing with the uh, legal issues there. And then as such, we will propose that uh, that time frame be reduced such that uh, at the end of the day, the learner's time is not wasted. We'll thank you for now. Sure. Thank you. Next. Good day, Honorable Chair, Honorable Members, Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Bernice Meku. I prefer to be called Faith. This is my daughter, Arisha Bianca Singh. I reject the ball, specifically, Clause 37. I'd like to sing to you, if I may. There are two beautiful words that begin in a song, Be Loved, and it goes like this. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not is not of God, beloved, let us love one another. But when the love for my natural responsibility and my natural right becomes politicized, then my liberty and my freedom as a responsible citizen of our Constitution becomes challenged. And I have a problem with that. And what this means, I have no other recourse but to firmly, categorically object to Clause 37 of the Bella Bill in its current format. Any further opinion would be open to informed discussion on a separate platform for further scrutiny as time permits. My child standing before me, being educated at a time that I could not afford to buy her writing paper. Neither did I have a pencil. She began writing with a pen. And at the back of a desktop calendar, many, many, many desktop calendars from our local municipality, in spite of an uninformed government social worker telling me 
the next time I see you here, I will take your child away from you. A government teacher refused to allow my child to use a toilet. And my child in elementary phase instantly said to the teacher, you do not love children because if you did, then you would allow me to use the toilet. Mommy, I don't want to go to that school. God bless you in Jesus' name. I love you very much. Thank you. All in support. Let me hear you. Thank you. Next. Honorable Chair and members, thank you for this opportunity. I'm Mia Kutze. I have been a teacher for 16 years and currently a play therapist for seven. So I'm speaking as a professional person and I oppose the entire Bella Bill for three reasons. First, on behalf of teachers. Being a teacher myself, I know the difference it made to my personal well-being to have a small class versus an overcrowded class. Too many pupils in a class stress and inhibits the inner joy and calm a teacher needs to be a loving and emotional available adult to children. A substantial amount of special need learners is receiving a tailor-made education outside DBE schools. I'm all for inclusive education, but our teachers are in desperate need of support for these learners as well as smaller classes. The majority of teachers I work with are tired and overwhelmed. Encouraging cottage schools and home schools will aid in helping teachers carry the heavy load work of, South, of education in South Africa across the board. Second, on behalf of quality education for all children, I was a support teacher for Albanian refugee children in the UK and is a firm believer in the research regarding the value of mother tongue education. We are fortunate to have the constitutional right in South Africa to mother tongue education. Homeschoolers and cottage school setups can support the DBE in the process of making mother tongue educational accessible to more learners across South Africa. Third, on behalf of parents, I do understand the DBE's concern to ensure that all children receive quality education. As a teacher, my experience of homeschooling was children entering schools without any skills due to the intervention of a social worker. That, in essence, is a welfare problem, not an educational problem. Loving, caring par parents know their child the best and must be put in a position to work with whatever education their child is receiving. Recently, I worked with a family who became foster parents to their little girl when she was only six months old, severely neglected and slow in development due to trauma. The parents decided to keep her in nursery school due to her development problems, then sent her to the primary school the following year for grade R. Unfortunately, somewhere the process fell through the cracks in the communication between the school and the DBE. The girl was adjusting well for about three weeks in grade R when the school was informed by the DBE that she's not the right age for her grade and needs to be put in grade one. Without money for an educational psychologist report and pressure from the school, the parents felt they had no choice but to put her in grade one. I don't have all the detail, matter of the fact is, this little girl started wetting and soiling her pants every day in grade one. She was not ready for that change, regardless of her age, and her parents knew that. I understand the view of the DBE and the school on the situation, but my professional plea is there cannot be a one-size-fits-all approach to the education. Yes. Therefore, I cannot support the Bella Bill because I'm not convinced the changes will be in the best interests for teachers, children, or parents in South Africa. Thank, Thank you very you. much. I gave her 19 seconds more. I won't give you, no? <laughs> Thank you. Let's go. <laughs> Thank you, honorable members, for the opportunity to speak to this committee. My name is Marita Green, and I am a homeschooling mother of seven children. I have been homeschooling for over 20 years. Um, my eldest is an award-winning student at the University of Johannesburg, and she is busy with her master's degree at the moment. Um, I reject the bill. I strongly object to Section 37. Section 37, as it is, uh, presumes that it is necessary for parents to apply to be registered to homeschool their own children. 
Now, it doesn't say inform as mentioned, as it was mentioned earlier during the opening address. It states that parents must apply to the head of the department for the re registration of the learner to receive home education. Now, this is equivalent of requiring parents to ask permission to attend to the God-given obligations to the children that God has made them responsible for. Over the last 20 years, I have come to know many homeschooling parents, and I can tell you that most homeschooling parents find it very offensive that they should ask permission to attend to the God-given duties. I don't need permission to feed my own children. I don't need permission to clothe my own children. I also don't need permission to educate my own children, because I already have it. Um, even Article 26 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights recognize this um, right. It states that parents have a prior right to choose the kind of education that shall be given to their children. I therefore appeal strongly to this committee of honorable members to remove Section 37 in its entirety as it fails to respect the duties that parents have towards their children. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks, thanks, Chairperson. Uh, greetings to all leadership and all the house. My name is Fanyana Sanpoinkomo. I'm from Ward 122, uh, south uh, in Indonesia. So, uh, mine, uh, I, I will support the bill 100%, because this bill can change a lot. For instance, for people who are staying in, in places like Boflafantein, where I come from. Uh, I have seen kids killing one another at the school uh, because of alcohol. I remember one of the stories that was in TV also, that the child that uh, stepped one of the kids inside the school and that child died also. So, and again, uh, what I would like to say in this bill, uh, it's a good bill, but it needs to be monitored. It needs to be monitored. Why I'm saying so? It's because of most of the things are good in paper. But when we're supposed to monitor it, to make sure that this bill is, is active in every school that is there, it can't, it, most of the times, it doesn't happen. So it becomes a, a white elephant bill that will never work to us. But now, however, uh, I want also to check, because I was trying to check in terms of uh, the age group of, of, of children at the school. Uh, we have some of the kids who, are, who have about 21 years at the school. And those kids, they change their mind because of we do not have FET colleges. So maybe if we can also check in terms of the age group of our kids at the school, maybe this thing of violence, then it can end at the school. Then again, in Region G, we don't have an FET college. So that these kids, that they are older to be at the school level, they can go to FET college. And let's make sure that uh, we emphasize in terms of sports at the school. Each and every school must have sports. Because these, th th these uh, children, they are very active. So they are using their energy on the wrong things. Like, for instance, to go and dance and have an alcohol and bring alcohol at the school. But if they can also have uh, uh, activities to do, then they can also uh, play, they can also maybe have um, uh, choirs or acting at the school. Those activities, they make sure that they give discipline into, the, into our kids. Thank you so much. Thank you. The first round went very well. We are now coming to this side. Uh, the gentleman there, uh, uh, this, uh, 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 not you, uh, uh, this one. The lady there in white, yes, white, yeah. Uh, Lucas, where are you going? You are coming? Car. Because later you won't be happy after the game, so let's <laughs> let's rather you know be on the same page. Three, four. 
Yes, uh, delayed, yes. Uh -uh. Yeah, Luena, yes. Uh, uh, black, the gentleman in black. Oh, come as well, come. Uh, yeah, blue t shirt. Yeah, uh, uh. ACDP. Luena, Chloe, 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 Chloe. Yeah, uh, my brother, come. And then, uh, and then, yeah, gentlemen, brown, brown jacket. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Brown jacket, come. Abut, no, brown jacket, next to you. Oh, yeah, this side. Number one, no, no, it's fine. Number one is, is coming here. Yeah. I'm, I'm taking 13. I got this one is standing up. Yeah, let's go, my brother. We know the rules, no? Yeah, let's understand them. Sure. Uh, good afternoon, fellow South Africans. Uh, my name is Rikoso Chiba from SATU, uh, the Gallant Teachers Organization. Uh, we support the bill. We are saying that uh, with regard to the issue of Clause 2, Amendment of Section 3 of SASA, we, are, we support that the, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the admission must start from Grade R to Grade 12. And then also we recommend to say that it must be in line with Employment of Educators Act. And then uh, we move to the issue of the roles and responsibilities of stakeholders. Uh, we recommend to say that the roles of teachers, principals, SGBs, and the district, it must be explained, it must be specified. Uh, we look at the issue of language policy. Uh, clause 5, we also support the issue of language policy. But we, we are saying it must not be, uh, it must not isolate Adalinas. It must be inclusivity, the issue of rainbow nation. It must not be discriminatory. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Amanda. I'm from the ACDP. We reject the Bella Bill, and in particular Clause 41, that amends the Section 61 of the South African Schools Act. This clause allows the Minister to make regulations concerning learner pregnancy. The DBE's policy on the prevention and management of learner pregnancies is about providing sexual reproductivity health services to learners as young as 12. These services include as the policy itself says, enabling, and I quote, learners to obtain abortions. This can be done secretly. This can be done without parents or guardians knowing. This can be done without the consent of parents and even against the wishes of parents, as we discovered during COVID with the vaccines. Par parents will be pushed out of the picture and their place taken by strategic and social partners will be assisting 12-year-old learners to access abortions and all forms of contraception. We have many educators with us today, and I'm sure that many of, of most of them would not do this or allow this to happen. However, they will not have to, a choice if they want, want to avoid jail. The minister not only wants the power to make regulations, but also to push teachers, parents, and SGB members out. The second part of the clause 41 will give the minister power to punish those who don't implement the regulations with fines and jail sentences of up to six months. These regulations could force teachers to refer learners as young as 12 for abortions and all forms of contraception and compel them to keep the secret from their parents. The DBE may claim that this is not how they will use these regulations, but we know 
we can't, how can we trust them? They haven't said what these regulations are. Even then, in a few years' time, the minister could change these regulations. The minister is asking you as parliamentarians to give her a blank check over our children. This is part of a war on families with the government taking the place of parents. We, re we therefore reject the Bella Bill, and in particular Clause 41. The ACDP rejects this Bella Bill in its totality. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairperson. My name is Karabo Moatse from Ward 47 in Zone 7, Topsonville. I, Karabo Moatse, support the Bella Bill, which seeks to enhance the organizational efficiency of the basic education system to improve school governance, leadership, and accountability, transforming education services, and protecting vulnerable groups to ensure learner well being and access to learning. The legacy of colonialism and apartheid has untouched spatial inequalities and poverty, creating systematic exclusion and requiring parliaments to continuously amend legislation to respond to the changing condition. I, Karabo Moate, a volunteer of the ANC in Ward 47, Zone 7, support the bill. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Regilene Victor Maimel from the SGB Association called Contribute a Hand in Education. First of all, I'd like to thank for the opportunity for giving our opinion and our ideas. We reject in totality the, the Bella Bill. The Bella Bill. The Bella Bill to us as school governing bodies, associations, is the same, like we say, we are going back. It's the same as Act 47 of 1953. And this is what is happening initially in our schools. We are taking the power from the people, and we are saying the, there's public ordinary schools, whereas we want the officials to take over through the minister to, uh, from the public or from the, uh, the governing bodies. There's no governing bodies which are governing now. We are just there as puppets. We are not doing anything. So this Bella Bill is just a tombstone on top of a, a grave of the SGBs. So we rejected it with uh, the contempt is deserved. Good afternoon, members of parliament. My name is Mary Nee Brits, and I thank you for your time today. I reject the Bella Bill in its totality. There is a saying, it is the role of the church to inform the conscience of the government. That being said, I am here today as a Christian, plugged into a biblical church, a concerned citizen, and a homeschool mother. I have many objections, but not enough time today to address all of them. I do believe to all these objections, there is one simple solution to all, which I will mention at the end. I specifically today object to sections 2, 4, and 37. The Bela Bull causes a very big problem. The Bela Bull undermines and disregards that God has instituted and designed the family unit. The upbringing and education of children is only the responsibility of parents, and the government has no ruling authority here. This includes the choice of what age, where, and with what a child is to be educated. In the case where parents choose to use public schooling, the government must still consult the parents in this education. The bill forces school attendance. God-fearing parents cannot, in good conscience, enroll their children in schools that mocks and blasphemes God by allowing evil, immoral, ungodly education in our schools. We have a problem, but there is a solution. Read the manual on educating children, the Bible, which is the word of the living God. 
Seeing that God has designed the family unit, consult His Word on how to educate children. This is truly the best for children. Repent for undermining God. If you are a true believer in the Parliament, we pray that the Lord Jesus Christ will empower you to be bold and to stand up for His truth. I close with a familiar passage. Please go and read the whole chapter at home. Proverbs 3. Do not let kindness and truth leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart, so you will find favor and a good reputation in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Thank you. Good day, honorable members. My name is Livan. I'm 15 years old and I'm a homeschool learner and I reject clause 37 of the Bella Bill. There was no meaningful consultation with homeschoolers. This clause is not based on research. I've been homeschooled since 2021 and I've seen tremendous improvements in myself. I am able to stand here and speak out because my confidence in public speaking has not been put down unlike in a mainstream school. During the first few months of being homeschooled, I realized that the curriculum that I chose really challenged my critical and logical skills. The freedom of choice and choosing my curriculum has allowed me to choose a curriculum that better suits me and exceedingly challenges me and my mental capacity. I have a vast majority of over 70 subjects to choose from, including law and psychology, which further prepare me for universities. Honorable members, please allow our parents to ease administration burden for government and to allow us to be free from anxiety for waiting and wondering about the outcome of the approval for us to be homeschooled. Section 37 of the Bella Bill undermines the mental capacity of our parents in choosing what's best for us being their children. Lastly, I feel it is an infringement of, of, of my privacy as a girl child to have the risk of an assessor who is coming to my home as we have seriously seen a lack of adequate security identification features and measures in other sectors. I therefore request that Clause 37 be sent back and redrafted. Thank you. Uh, speakers, I greet you all in front. I greet all of the honorable members. The person who is standing here is Pumele Chatane from Orange Farm Extension 1, from CELT, the only organization in South Africa that is representing a learner who can face a book the whole day. With my intellectual disability, I also want to say tomorrow, Mama, I made it. I know I can't look at the book the whole day, but I also can be a technician. I must not be thrown out of the bin, but we'll fix it. Don't worry. I love you all. Uh, I will say it. What I will say is one. I reject uh, point 19 by saying, uh, Gubhung, I won't lie, Gubhung. Gubhung, Uguba, Gu El Sintla, Subegu Normal School. Sia Tuguba Bafejo. Minang funda gabhung for 18 years young. 18 years. Mfunda Sia Tugwa. Even the teachers must talk. So please, I'm rejecting it, Gakulu. I'm saying no. I'm rejecting it. But please, guys, Sngailung San, Yonke Lentole, Sngailung San. If you want to know about a slow learner, come to Selti. We'll teach you. We'll show you challenges. We'll show you solutions. I will be a technician. I'm a carpenter. I will be successful. I will be a Nyaupe. I will be an example to you. I will be your child. A good one also. I love you all. If you want to see more, what's the Orange Farm? 27 May, I will be doing a workshop there. I will show you challenges, solutions. I'm national. You'll see, you'll see me in all of the provinces. Don't worry. I'm a picture of a special school. Also, RCLs, I'm representing it. Thank you. Hold on, hold on. Uh, my... Uh, 
instructions were that after introducing yourself, mm. you say you reject or you um, um, support the bill. Okay. Uh, when are you are uh, saying you reject clause 19? Yeah, clause 19. I'm asking. Okay, yes. Let's uh, either reject the bill or okay. support the bill. Okay. In 2019, I reject the bill. Okay. Yes. Sir. Um, my name is Josias Mohawa. Um, I'm a homeschooling parent and uh, being given two choices of reject or accept, I, I reject the bill. I would partially accept if that was a third option. Um, and the reason for my rejection in particular is clause 37. Um, what I see in this clause is that there is almost a, a thought or an idea that parents would be irresponsible in dispensing their duties to educate their children, that the government or the systems of that the government has put in place would be a, a better alternative to parenting. As a parent, I would want to be given that right to determine my child's destiny and in terms of what education they are going to receive and how they're going to receive it. Um, Homeschooling is something that has always been there. Schools are new, in a sense. And you cannot mess with what is naturally there. Children are born to parents, and I would plead that parents would be given that acknowledgement and respect. And maybe if you were to change anything there, make that clause about how the department or how the government would support those parents who wish to follow a different route, to, you know, who would want an alternative to the system that is offered currently. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Beverly Walker. Um, we reject the Bella Bill, and in particular, Clause 41, that amends Section 61 of the South African Schools Act. This clause allows the minister to make regulations concerning learner pregnancy, the DBE's policy on the prevention and management of learner pregnancy includes comprehensive sexuality education. The DBE has forced CSE and scripted lesson plan on schools, and they have stated that as an employer, it can force educators to teach CSE and other programs that are in conflict with the educator's conscience. This clause will give the minister the power to make regulations to entrench the CSE program in school. Regulations will make CSE law, and the minister not only wants the power to make regulations, but also to punish educators, parents, and SGB members who don't follow the regulations. The second part of Clause 41 will give the minister power to punish those who don't implement the regulations with fines and jail sentences of up to six months. Educators and SGB will not have a choice if they want to avoid jail. They will have to teach and implement whatever the minister makes subject to regulations. There is very little that will stop the minister soon, including the sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, and sex characteristic guidelines, which the DBE is developing, is developing using money from the UN right now in these regulations. Children who want to undergo medical procedures to prevent puberty or change their gender will have the right to do so from 12 years of age and educators and SGBs who do not enforce this policy could be punished. We need to stop this now by stopping the minister from making any regulations. Parliament must keep these powers for itself 
and stop the minister. We cannot trust the government because they go back on their word all of the time. We therefore reject the Bella Bella Bill, the Bella Bill, and in particular Clause 41. ACDP rejects the bill outright. ACDP rejects the bill in its entirety. We ask you, we ask you to rather amend the bill to include freedom of conscience, of conscious protections for educators and SGB members. Parents should have freedom of conscience and be able to protect their children and have the right to opt from CSE classes. Comprehensive sexuality education cannot be separated from the values and belief systems of parents as this involves closely held beliefs. I thank you. Sure. Next. Tawela, good day everyone. I am Madime Janis Lamola, I'm the DA activist. I'm rejecting and objecting this bill concerning several issues. Because the, I call this a bully bella bill because it is unconstitutional. Because it will discriminate and undermine other official languages as prescribed by our constitution, such as African's language. Limited the power to the school governing body and decision making concerning the language and, and admission of policies to, for their schools, that will undermine the progress that is already working better, so to speak, by the SGB. The other issue is the centralization of power to the Department of Education, which means problematic to me because it's the non-performing department that uh, cannot even build the, the, the school, they cannot even uh, eradicate or alleviate the pit toilets for their schools. They, they, should just, they should start there. They, I can give them the solution to just stop this hearing and save the, the, the time of the citizen and the money that they should, uh, can be used to the available uh, matters. This bill is also a, a, a problem to me because now, if you're going to strip all the powers for the SGB and you centralize the power and give the power to the Minister of Education, which means the power is going to rely to, 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 to the this, this specific uh, someone, which is, which is going to limit the power to the, the majority and the community of those people who can be able to take the better decision for their schools because they know better, because they are staying there, they know their English, they know their, 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 their communities on those residential part of their areas. Which means this bill is, is going to capture the school's uh, uh, rights to come up with those decision making on the matters that concerning the, uh, the learners, that concerning the schools, that concerning the decision that need to be taken by the schools. After all, I am rejecting this bill. Thank you so much. Next. Karibito kina Matilda Malefa Juel. Kito bua sesuto sesuto hasitoloki. Bella Billy Enana Gehana. Ka, I give my land on a ho ha. Especially how the corporate and punishment in Mobani, Kibato Seba Hore. Hi, E. Mula Owa, O Panishabana, Udumela and Utamis and Ali, Bomistresi, Hubaning, or Hubaning, Bas Bona, Banabasco, Lubani, Libona, Balejan, Bautan, Bautsan and Bosuku, Babulana, Babulayana. Badella, but the teacher at the Badi Rutan, Kinaloza Mali Faith Masbuku Kat Bo January, Reshaka di Golo, Mopin Vili around the Soviet. Hobo Sloko and now no Hula Mistress Auzuta, Omo Sompa. Today, Wahangwana, a Hono Josa Mistress, a couple of work, one of the poor Eloi work poor pa. I do that Prispala now Ruta Hor, Ota Montanuana, Yamai. I will pa, Mola or Little Fam Banabaruna. Uaba Sula, Usula Luruna le Batswadi, Usula Lubana teacher Hore, Household Jane, Wana has a little to his seal, Ocala Umukalak eye. 
And then when it comes to Ligua, Rehano Rixabujal, Hona Jemo South Africa, Rifila, Lifatina Comora, Sodoma, Bujuala, the drugs, Oko Pipe, the weapon, the killing, the Salanka Racharetta School, Banaba School of Babulayana, Babulayana, Babulana, live for the take, or a support, Utomana, a loser, Bupilo, Kataba, a support. As in twenty, Molao, Oki, Kupa, Halli, Duty. Mo committing alone. This card will not allow a committee fail. Empalink and Moya or Boots Wad, Lena Hanele Batswadi, Bahu di San Banaba Bona, Badly Cancabu Joe, Lebabona, Horobanaba Bona, but Hole Future, a bit eerie. Hona no, how shall most of Runa, read a single parent, Rudisabana Relibang, Bonta de Habayo, Bonta de Bajuaki, Ahutsebi. Yale fatila South Africa. So how will so banabaruna retroba fa ing? How no mulum 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 afuwa di rights? Bafuwa di rights sa wets and chongo le mulum ba yetsang. Banabaruna itoba me libon tate ba juang. Wane kitiba tuto na hutu itala kala ping. How mula wa mutwa di runa ruso ke bon me libon tate libon kono libon koko libon rachadi. How hutu hutu wache? Mula o kajo ko kitiba ikemela. Reba hudi se ba ba kutlo ba ba fa eng ba na ba rona ke pa re le nna hane njwale le ke nye mpilo ya botswadi le se ka na hana ka thuto ya di levels mpa le ke nye pilo ya botswadi eh hold on my brother we must get to the translation uh, translation Please, uh, Samari Mara, there are certain uh, issues that you must take out. Please. My name is Malifa Jewel. Sorry. Which Thank you. Sorry, sorry. Apologies. My name is Malifa. Joel, I reject the bill, especially the matter of corporal punishment. Uh, kids themselves do attack each other, and they attack teachers at school. It's said when parents, I mean, children use abusive language to what uh, teachers, you know, as you used to be, to be obedient to, to teachers when you're young, but your child is no longer be obedient because of the rights the issue of alcohol and drugs and weapons, those are big issues that they end up killing our children. And for useless things like heads, uh, she's appealing to the members to think like parents. Some of them are single parents. Fathers are no longer are not there. So if kids have too many rights, there will be too much, uh, there will be too much disobedience at home. So do not abolish the law of parents think like parents. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Thank you. Honorable members, thank you for the opportunity of speaking today. My name is Craig Swat. I partially reject the bellable, which means I must say I reject the bellable. I plea for you to remove clause 37 from the billable. I decided to home educate because I wanted to nurture this love for learning in our child. This decision led to having a thriving child today who exceeds in academics amongst all of our other passions. At the schools where we inquired to place the ch our child at the time, they were unable to accommodate her with new concepts of learning because schools must follow the grade to age prescribed curriculum. According to the Schools Act, we realized this would be harmful to our child's development, so we opted out to home educate. My daughter has the freedom to complete two grades a year due to her love for learning. She is able to enjoy her passion for music at the same time as a subject. Homeschooling is a wonderful, stress-free, and it's available to everybody. It's my, right not, it's my right to notify the Department of Education that I'm educating my child. I need not ask for permission for my, 
to, the act, to act in, the in my child's best interests. It is my right as a parent to decide which educational path and curriculum suits my child on the basis of her interests and her talents. Home education has many different methodologies and, it is, and is a perfect educational laboratory in, for our country. It would be foolish for us to attempt to shut down this option, which can benefit any child with learning disabilities, fast learners, and children who do not thrive in a classroom setup. Consider this, if you have a fish and a koala bear, and you assess them both to see who can get full marks for climbing a tree, what failure would the fish not experience after this test? A fish thrives in a water pond, a koala bee in trees. Let our children thrive in the same manner, each where we know how they learn best. Clause 37 is very confusing and unclear. For instance, subsection 9 and 8 contradict each other completely. This is just one part of it. The rest of the clause is no clearer. If this clause is passed, it will not only be an irrational and irresponsible decision, but it will also create incredible conflict between officials and parents due to the wide scope of the confusion it causes. I plead for you to remove Clause 37 from the bellable for the sake and benefits of Thank our you. children. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next. Dumela eh ka lebitso ke le bogang tshauke ke tlhaga wa 13 go protea tlen eh ke patia matlaba pensi so ke dumela na le yona pili e 100% kontle ga phate ya bojalwa a re reng fela ha e fitla mo premising di premises tsa school go skana le bojalwa at all Kibua so because Kisebeta closely li CPF. Actually, I'm part of CPF. So we noticed her as much as Reka complaina, Libale Papala Tutu, Arren says Copani Libujala, the scholars, Gonsas Copani Tutu, Saska Copanale, Bujala completely. Kikopa Hatala Kanya, the skills. O we talk orange if I'm away, it's very beginning and about a Mohoyan. O kare re ka gatella ya ka lona ba le fapha la thuto le gatella khanya di skills bana ha ba fiwa ka go tshwana O kare le ka gatella thata khanya di skills because ka bona every time go tsenya di bill go tsenya di bill as much as it's a great are compulsory o kare le di skills mo di kolong tsa rona especially our public schools le ka tsenya khanya di skills in a compulsory please 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 ke se o ke skopang fela thank you Thank you. Uh, uh, oh, translation. Uh, yes, uh, okay. Chaperson. Uh, thank you very much, Chaperson, for the opportunity. My name is Lebohang Chauke from Protea Clan Ward 13. I'm a member of the ANC. I support this bill 100%, except for one aspect, which is uh, uh, that aspect which speaks to availability of alcohol in schools. I do not agree with this. Uh, we must not uh, bring alcohol to the schools. I am also a member of uh, CPF. We know the, the, that uh, we know what problems uh, can arise because of using alcohol in schools. And the other aspect I want to uh, emphasize is about uh, skills development in our schools. I am making this humble plea to the department to look into this matter of introducing skills development in our schools and to make it compulsory. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, those of you who are filling in the forms, I'm told that uh, you are taking on the detailed summary that you are taking support, not support, and partially support. You are taking all of them. <laughs> yes. So you are saying uh, that table is lying. 
we can show you there. So when we are doing that, we are doing what we call a spoiled ballot. So we are, we are pleading with you. You just take one. Whether you support, you're not supporting, or you partially support. So there's three options. You choose one. Raul Kwanaga. Yes. Now, ring, ring. Uh, yeah, all right. One, two, three, four, five. This, the lady, six. The gentleman, seven. Yeah, the torch. Eight. Next to him. All right, nine. Come. Yeah, mama. Who pointed you? Who pointed you? I will come to you. Uh, these people pointed at themselves. Yeah, so. Number one. Let's go. Good day, honourable members. My name is Jasmine. I'm a homeschooled homeschool mom. Sorry, I'm nervous. I oppose the Basic Educational Laws Amendment Bill in its entirety. I'm here as a concerned citizen and mother. Today I will be representing my own children. This bill is unconstitutional. How can we say that the Bill of Rights is a cornerstone of democracy in South Africa? if we allow this bill to be passed. Be because that would mean that democracy will no longer be a cornerstone. Currently, the public school system is overwhelmed. Grade, odds, grade ones that don't get placed in public school because of a lack of space, teachers, and resources. Which brings me to my next point. Section three proposes to make grade O compulsory. Would put pe that would put more strain on the already failing system. Also, making criminals out of innocent parents if they do not comply with this unrealistic notion. There's a body of e evidence that indicates they still need to play at that age. I object to clause 3750, section 51. Homeschooling takes a strain off the already overwhelmed school system. Therefore, it should be celebrated and not persecuted. According to the Bill of Rights, we as South African citizens have a freedom of expression, which includes academic freedom. We should be able to choose freely the curriculum we want to use that's best suited to our family. We are a God-fearing people, and we choose to live our lives to the word of God. <coughs> We have the right to express our religious beliefs throughout our schoolwork on a daily basis. Homeschooling is accessible to everyone, and it doesn't have to be expensive. We sit with our children day in and day out. Therefore, we are constantly assessing them, which makes it futile to get an assessor from outside. According to Section 14 of the Bill of Rights, we have the right to privacy, so home visits by government officials is an invasion of that privacy. In conclusion, we will not be handing over the rights and freedom of our children to the government. We stand in the unattainable authority of Christ. The Bella Bill is a complete overreach of government. <clears throat> by forcing these laws on South Africans, it will not benefit children at all. Thank you. Uh, my name is Percy Sibata. I'm here to represent the PCO of Lenesia. I come from Ward 120, Zone 2, 
and I'm an HOD for education in my ward. And I'm an ANC member in good standing. But unfortunately, my ANC leadership, I will not protect you for getting people to, 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 to actually present a wrong bill. On that basis, I reject the bill in its entirety. And I would like to refer you to page 12, uh, where there is an amendment on section 8 of Act 84 of 1996, uh, subsection A, where it's 1A, it's 1, subsection A, and it's underlined as an insertion to denote that it's an insertion. That very same ambiguity where you include in a bill unless authorized, that actually like throws away everything else that you have written under this bill. Because when you say unless authorized, it technically says that you have assigned all the rights to the HOD and the minister, which nullifies anything else that the experienced educators on the ground can contribute. This bill uh, being nullified to its level extent after page 12, it now uh, starts to speak of issues that are no longer a contribution, but I'm trying to validate my arguments so that perhaps maybe you can take it forward to the relevant drafters who, quite sincerely speaking, they if imported what cannot belong to us here in the African continent. Discipline in our children, particularly what you term corporal punishment, so spare the rod and spoil the child. You cannot now expect an environment where the learners have now more of a right to dictate to the uh, uh, assessor or the teacher to say, no, you can treat me this way. Tomorrow you will be actually like uh, dismissing a teacher because the child comes to you and uh, justifies that the teacher was staring at me. Because this soft language that you have inserted in here, quite sincerely speaking, Thank they you. have to. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Denver Fokanas, and I represent my family. Our family is a homeschooling family. We reject this bill outright. There are many reasons why we reject this bill, but I'm only going to mention two of the reasons because we just don't have the time. First of all, it's in section one, the definition of basic education. The definition of basic education in section one must make allowance for other internationally recognized grading systems to allow the adoption of remote learning curricula. We suggest that the, de that the Department of Education do proper research in the excellent, publicly based, internationally deployed curriculums available to children. Now, some of the other curricula include Cambridge, the American High School Diploma, Association of Christian uh, Schools International and many, many others. Our second objection is against, or one of the other objections is Section 1C on corporal punishment. This might not be too popular, but using words in the definition uh, or phrases that you're not allowed to smack, or use your hand, any object, and uh, not forcing a child to do exercises and so forth, or making them uncomfortable. In contrary to the Bella Bill, biblically, some corporal punishment is permissible as long as the parent carrying out the corporal punishment does so with loving kindness. Hitting a child in anger or frustration should be outlawed. 
So hitting a child in anger or frustration should be outlawed, but using biblical principles of love through disciplining children must be supported by parents. In, uh, I think it was said before, but in Proverbs 13:24 uh, it reads, "He who spares the rod hates his son, but he who loves him is diligent to discipline him." To ignore God's ordinances is harmful to our children. Any attempt to prevent a person to obey God is being in enmity with God. Even God's law does not allow abuse of ch of a child, but allowance for loving. Biblical punishment must be allowed. Thank you. Am I fine now? Okay. Uh, greetings to the leadership. Uh, my name is Temba Makubela. I'm from Soweto. I'm with Batali Baduli, Soweto here. We are here to confirm, to say that we warmly accept and support the bill. <laughs> uh, Chairperson, in the clauses that you have proposed, or the bill that you have proposed, which are 56, we are entirely accepting them. And making reference to uh, section 37 on uh, private schooling. We are saying that the government must not delegate the responsibility to people that are not known. Everybody, whether public or people want to have a private schooling, the government must know, they must register. This bill is not saying that those who want to embark on, on private, they cannot do that, but they need to be registered. Because if anything goes wrong, if we have a, a, a schools which are um, go, good schools, it is the government that has been playing. So the government has the responsibility. So on that one, I am saying I'm supporting you. And then on this bill, uh, especially on Section 21, the, the, this bill is proposing that Section 21 must be removed. I'm saying already that clause or those powers in terms of sec Section 21 school lies with the HOD. You, the SGP applies for, for those powers. So we are saying now, um, the, 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 the government must, must maintain and must monitor that um, a section. And then in terms of section 10, that deals with corporal punishment. I support that section, and but I'm saying, because we are saying that children must not, or the school must not administer corporal punishment. There's the department or the parliaments must provide alternative way of correcting the behavior within the schools. Because if, if there's no alternative in that regard, it becomes a challenge. And then I also want to emphasize on this one of admission police. It's very key that we must emphasize that we are supporting that we must have more than three official South African language in the admission police. The addition, it must be the sign language. I thank you. Greetings. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Muzi Shongwane. Uh, I'm representing PCO Zochazem Motana in Zone 8. Uh, let us zoom in into uh, Section 18A, uh, Clause 14. Uh, I do accept the bill. I support the bill fully. Uh, on the Section 18A, we need to tighten it. Uh, because it raised the issues of uh, transparency in terms of finances. Uh, 
as you understood that of our SGP members, others they have got inferior education background. Uh, it needs to be taken into cognizance that regarding the illicit ways of dealing with uh, finances, uh, indeed they must be guided and be inducted so that they should not have a business with the school and that thing it can hinder the processes of uh, in doing good in procurement because there are a number of issues that we have seen in different provinces where there are uh, people who are murdered because of uh, getting business deals in schools uh, by supplying food or by supplying anything. Uh, indeed, we need to make sure that we are upskilling our SGP members so that they are able to adhere in terms of being transparent and also in the issues of finances. I support this bill being Muzikhwane from Zocha Zem, Zone 8, Ward 46, Chablane, Pegim Langeni branch. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Standing before you today is Faith Sbongile Siku, representing the ACDP. We, as the ACDP, are opposed to the bill, and in particular, Clause 37 that amends Section 51. This is the section on homeschooling. When the DBE imposed comprehensive sexuality education and scripted lesson plans on schools, the DBE spokesperson, Elijah Mshanga, said in the press that the only way parents would opt out of their new CSE lessons is by sending their child to private school or homeschooling them. Parents then took children out of school to homeschool them, but now the DBE wants to force the national curriculum statement, what people normally call caps on homeschoolers. The Department of Basic Education has said in previous meetings that homeschoolers will be free to choose curriculum. This is not correct, because even if homeschoolers could choose any curriculum, the DBE will still assess your child strictly against the national curriculum statement. This is set out in section 51, subsection 2. So you are saying a homeschooler can do anything that they want, but the test you give them at the end of the year, test them on CSE. If a homeschooler does not do CSE, they will fail the assessment, and then the provincial education department can stop the homeschooling and force them to go to school where they will be taught CSE. No one can escape CSE, not even at home. The Bella Bill is being used to force learners to do CSE. We, as the ACDP, ask that these clauses be removed and that these clauses be added that protect we as the SCDP ask that these clauses be removed and that new clauses be added that protect parents' rights to close a godly curriculum and to have their children assessed against the curriculum they have chosen, not the national curriculum statement. We are also opposed to section 51, subsection 16, which gives the minister power to make regulations relating to the registration and administration of home education. This will allow her to make regulations and this will allow her to impose CSE on homeschoolers. Parliament must keep these powers for itself and not give the minister the power to make new regulations. As I close, we say no to CSE. We say no to DBE replacing parents. We say no to Bella Bill. We say yes to family. We say yes to parents. Parents' right to teach their children and train them up in godly ways. We say yes to ACDP. The ACDP rejects the Bella Bill outright. The ACDP okay. re Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. 
My name is Maureen Kumalo. I'm here to represent ACDP. We reject the bill outright. We reject the Bella bill and it, in particular clause 41 that amends section 61 of South Africa of South African School Act. The clause allows the minister to take regulation concerning the learner pregnancy. The DPE's policy on the prevention of the man management of the learner's pregnancy is about providing sexual reproductive health services to learners as young as 12. These services include, as the policy itself says, enabling, and I quote, learners to obtain abortions. This cannot be done secretly. This can be done without parents, our guardian, knowing. Parents will be pushed out of the picture and their place taken by strategic and social partners who will be assessing a 12-year-old learner to access abortion and all forms of contraception. The DPE may claim that not is how they will use the regulation for, but how can we trust them? We challenge them to publish the draft regulation. We challenge them to say who is writing this regulation. We cannot say we support regulations enacted in terms of a bill until we know who, what those regulations are. Say what the regulations are, or is that also a secret that the DPE is keeping from parents? We say down with secrets, down with DPE, taking the place of parents, down with Bella Bill. Long live families, long live godly government, long live ACDP. We therefore reject Bella Bill, and in particular, close 41. We say stop the school abortion bill. ACDP rejects the bill outright. The ACDP rejects the bill in its entirety. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chair. My name is uh, Buipilo Muleko, the Provincial Secretary of COSAS in Gauteng. Uh, I would like to add the following, that this bill is uh, progressive and intentional about addressing the injustices of the past. I'd also like to add more on Clause 32, amend Amendment uh, Section 41, that in order to respond quickly to the problems of parents not affording school fees. The department must change uh, the quantile levels of schools where the exemption of uh, paying school fees applications are high. This must be done by directly by the department because schools uh, management teams are deliberate about not uh, approving these exemption applications because they rely heavily on these funds to, mu to misuse them and to deliberately reject black uh, students who are not affording to enter those schools. On the financial accountability of uh, schools, this uh, includes uh, Clause 30, amend Amendment of Section 38, Clause 33, Amendment of Section 42, Clause 34, Amendment of Section 43. We highly support this part because those amend uh, these amendments seek to task parents with being present in school activities, but beyond, it forces the SGB and SMTs to not only set financial goals, but to achieve them, and achieve them in time and use the money legibly. Schools have a diabolous behavior of gaslighting parents into agreeing with financial statements that are bogus, and we are in highly support that this bill allows the parents to have the financial statements prior to the meeting so that they can set their own opinions. Often in January, this uh, speaks to the part where they're saying whoever closes the school must be arrested. Often in January, here in Gauteng mostly, white dominant schools deliberately reject black learners. And when confronted, they resort to closing the schools or resort to violence. So we really appreciate that finally this bill is saying they, they must get arrested as and when they want to behave like terrorists. <laughs> to those who think uh, corporal punishment is normal, please forgive yourselves. It's not our problem that uh, you have been beaten up as and when you were growing up. But violating kids of this generation is and when you are saying you are molding them, 
it will not happen. Courses will sleep with you in the same blanket as those teachers. We sleep with them in the same blanket and they're out of jobs now. Maybe you'll hire them in those homeschooling things so that they can come and beat up your kids. Not in public schools, courses will not allow it. Thank you. Uh, I highly support the bills, so is courses. Thank you. Thank you. Before, before you, you come in, I'm not intimidating you. Um, there are three cars that are, I'm, I'm going to ask their owners to quickly go attend to them. They are probably on fire. The first one is a registration number KW31HWGP. Yeah, Shimoto. So the owner of the car, please run. The car is on fire. DX. 46ZH GP HM 60LG GP Can you please uh, quietly and urgently attend to your car because they are going to be well clamped um, if you don't go to them as urgently as possible. Thank you very much. Yeah, you can continue. Good day, all. I am Reverend Nick Bowers from the ACDP. The ACDP rejects the ball outright. Kids' submission for clauses 37 and 51. As a student, I believe that my voice must be heard on topics related to my education. If this ball is passed, my parents will have no control over the stuff that I learn at school. And even if I am homeschooled, my parents will still have to teach me what the government wants them to. This is wrong because we all have the freedom to education that is controlled by someone in an office far away. Some people in the government will be able to control everything I do while I am being homeschooled. My parents will have no say in what I am being taught. Thus, does not respect my privacy or my parents' freedom to teach me. By passing this bill, the role of my parents in life and education will be und undermined. I urgently ask that this bill be relooked and amended. The ACDP rejects this bill in the, in the entirety. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your ears, South Africans. My name is Claudio Monzeglio a member of Antioch Bible Church in Honeydew and a member of Salt and Light in Motion, an organization that helps women experience un experiencing unplanned pregnancies and abuse. We object to the billable in its entirety. And because of time, let me give you a specific example. Section 41, in relation to the management of learner pregnancy, where the bill gives the responsibility of the management of learner pregnancy over to another party other than their parents. It is in your best interest to remove this section. If you allow abortions to girls through the DBE, not only the girl who chooses the abortion, not only the physician, but also the Department of Education will be liable for murder before God. We strongly reject this clause. A pregnant schoolgirl requires significant support from loved ones and a supportive community when she finds she is pregnant. To seclude the girl from support and the awareness of being pregnant will only increase the rate of minor pregnancies. Since the schoolgirl is a minor, this, needs, this girl needs her parents and guardians and they must be notified. This amendment is unacceptable and we hereby dispute and appeal any policy or law that does not allow parents to care for and protect their minor daughters. Pregnancy management falls obviously in the category of caring for a child. Hence, this, resp this res responsibility lies with the parents. In the case that a parent or guardian cannot be available to the girl, obviously, then a social worker should be assigned to her. And every effort must be taken to preserve the future of this girl and the child within her. The school girl with her parents or guardian must make a decision to either keep the baby or give the baby up for adoption. This fast track highway to give abortions through the DBE is unacceptable. What's done is done, a new life is pregnant and the girl is a mother. She needs qualified advice, help, and support. This amendment prom promotes secrecy, coercion, and a fast track to abortion. 
which only makes things worse. This also will promote underage and minor intercourse due to the removal of all consequences of their actions. Proverbs 6 says, God hates the hands that shed innocent blood. This is the same for all law that promotes the same. And the contradictions in this amendment, South African law is inconsistent with regard to the age at which a child is considered mature enough to make decisions. A child is not considered mature enough at 17 to drive a vehicle without adult supervision, yet the government regards a 12-year-old girl as mature enough to make a decision to murder her child through abortion. And according to this bill, without even having to notify her parents or guardians, until we as a nation re re turn from this evil, repent, and obey God's law, we will see the effects of his ju you. judgment on our... Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Muzigaise Ndlovu from the liberation movement called the African National Congress which in its nature, it identifies the plights of its people and finds solutions to those plights. And that saying, I fully support the Bella Bill. Now Romans 13 verse one says, everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God and the ANC having been found by pastors, I think it allows us to say we've been established by God. Pre-1994, which ushered in our democracy, our communities were subjected to segregation based on language, race, and otherwise, and further segregation in township based on languages which were detrimental on so social cohesion of our people, but democracy ushered in better policies that are acceptable to the large population of our society. Most of these policies proposed in this bill seeks to mend and correct all the wrongs that were made by the minority government that had no interest of the majority whatsoever. Language and admission policy must not be a stumbling block, it must be guided by the Constitution. Therefore, Section 29.2 of the Constitution states that everyone has the right to receive education in the official language or languages of their choice in public educational institutions where that education is reasonable, practicable. This means that the children have the right to receive education in the language of their choice, and schools should, have ev should make every effort to provide education in that language if it is reasonable to do so. Section 29.3 of the Constitution states that no person may be refused admission to any educational institution on grounds of race or language. Section 6.2 say of the Constitution states that the state must take practical posi positive measures to elevate the status and advance the use of Isizulu, Isklosa, and English. Furthermore, we say, as there is a call for lifestyle audit on public uh, officials, we also support the lifestyle audit on SGPs as they will be handling public affairs. The bill provides the school attendance in Kopalzari for, from grade R, which will improve learner preparation and resource support for grade R learners. We know that this bill will also improve the deteriorating learner perf uh, uh, school performance and dropping out through clause three, which call for enhanced monitoring of school attendance by educators, principals, and the school governing body, and addressing misconduct in schools through clause nine, which clarifies what constitutes an act of serious misconduct by learners. This bill will further address challenges regarding Thank learner access. Thank you. Vitons in Say, Nella Wataxi, Vinan Kinga, 
the Genuar, Akuana gangster lay, and by Padalama Baz, the Soku, Vanashkola Kandi, Locos Lazos, Kumakuana, and Kuna into Liva, Kumakova Kavazas, the Zar Sikason, Sen Alana Ziaresi, Nazala Eskolin, in Kom. Thank you. Uh, Mapi, let's uh, allow translation. What is your point of order? Uh, give me a mic, please. Thank you very much, Chairperson of the session. My name is Tulufelo Rakutu from Ward 60. My order is on you, Chairperson. Chairperson, we have been having speakers that have been speaking in English right through. And at no point have you asked any of the translators to assist because you are under the assumption that everybody in the house understands English. It is very wrong. If we are going to translate, let it be that we translate for everybody that is in the house so that we are all in the same page. Thank you. No, 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 thank you very much. Uh, I, I assume you were not in when we started because I, I laid down the rules when we started, uh, and no one had a problem. We said when we started, <clears throat> if there are people <clears throat> who are going to have a problem with uh, English being used, must indicate so that we can translate for them. One. Two, we said, if there are people who want to be nearer to the sign language, they must indicate so that we can ask those gentlemen seated in the front row to, to move. No one had a problem. So your, 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 your order is indeed not in order because it was part of the rules we have agreed. If you have a problem with an English, indicate so that will translate when they speak. That's what we say. But there's no one who's had uh, uh, that problem. And let's not assume. <laughs> let's not assume that, uh, yeah, let's not assume that uh, if we have elders in the room, they can hear English. Uh, it will be a wrong assumption. Uh, so I said to, I said to you, is there anybody who has a problem uh, the English being used? And I want to do that exercise now. Amblal or Hawutli or Kimbotat. Una le moto sa utli inga kubu as kwana. My sister, continue. Oh, translation. Okay, thanks. Uh, sorry, Chair. The previous speaker, the, uh, the young girl was speaking. Her name is Nyeleti Stole. She says she's from Waterworks, from a group organization called Pilamunto Myama. And she is against alcohol and drugs because here in Gauteng, we've experienced previously one of the teachers who was stepped by a learner, and it was found out that the learner was drunk. So hence, she is against that. Also, she says in Waterworks, they are experiencing some of people who are um, using drugs, who at times have been uh, blocked the buses um, in, 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 for them, you know, I mean, for the bus not to, to pass in certain places. However, also she noticed that there is a house which was found with people who are using drugs, and she believes, hence, because of these reasons, there shouldn't be any exception or um, the authorization of using any drug or alcohol in the school premises. Did, uh, did she support or reject? We could not hear. Thank you. No, that's no, fine. It she rejects. Uh, 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 spokesperson. 
thanks. Uh, Akhe watuwa wa ulu. O mi mpila luna kitse piso matala. The chairperson of the ANC would click in shower at 11. Um, chairperson, I would like to support uh, the basic education amendment bill. First of all, before Nkaya Kopili, I would like to hope I'll congratulate the parliament on making sign languages one of our 12 uh, official languages. Uh, Chairperson, the reason why I'm, I'm welcoming this bill, it's uh, one of the amendments, which is uh, criminalizing parents who don't ensure that their children are, are in school with fines or jail time. Because we a high level of dropouts. So I think with this bill, uh, amendment, it will make sure we don't have Banaba uh, school language that dropping out. Number two, uh, uh, Chairperson, I don't support uh, the Great R being uh, compulsory because go most of the time now generally Great R R. So I think uh, Great R R should be the one language uh, it's uh, uh, compulsory. Number two, uh, Chairperson. I'm calling on the total scrapping out of allowing uh, schools to sell alcohol outside school premises. Uh, Chairperson, what kind of message are we sending out to our learners in this country whereby uh, we are having a problem of substance abuse? If you are allowing this to happen, you are allowing the friend of alcohol, which is drugs, to be sold uh, inside uh, the school premises. And also, Chairperson, I'm also, say, I'm also saying that um, I'm not there, uh, I'm saying I'm saying no to any form of uh, corporal punishment. As a coach person, of course, I say we look for it. Also, I'm thinking to turn a scholar. Also, I want Thank you. Thank you. Uh, don't forget, na. Those of you who, wants, who, who are shy like me, you can write. And uh, so the, the forms are still there behind the camera person. I'm now coming for the last time this side. Uh, uh, yeah, the lady with the bot, the gentleman with the, yeah, all right. Yellow. Ah, we've got rules. We've got rules. We've got rules. Ah, uh -uh. ah. Uh -uh. We've got rules. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Uh, Point to again. Oh, yeah, no, no, that one I did. All right, yeah, come. And then, uh, all right, come. And then uh, yeah, Jean. And then, uh, 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 timer, yeah? Timer, no, no, this one, yeah. One, two, three. No, 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 point to again. Oh, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. The lady, seven. The gentleman uh, behind, eight. Uh, uh, sit down. The, the, yeah, you, you come. Yeah, come. Uh, uh, Abuti, 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 Abuti. Kikupilenda to. Yes. This, yeah. No, come. Yeah, we're not going to go combine. Ah, we combine like many now. Okay, the bag I'm on. Ah, we're not the back. Yeah, come. Number one. 
Uh, the rest of you, let's write. Take the form. No, 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 I saw them. Ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. My name is Ntumba. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Why is, there, why is it noisy? Entered number last, RMOL. Can we can we settle down? We want to understand what's what's the commotion about? Uh, you've just arrived now. Uh -uh, Mamela. Yeah? No, no, no. Please go sit down. Can we go sit down? I don't understand the commotion. Uh, PPS. PPS. Uh -uh. I'm left with one round this side and one round that side. My brother, let's go. Good afternoon, Dumelang. My name is Ntumba Katabwa from uh, Antioch Bible Church, and I'm a proud homeschooling parent for the last eight years or so. While I understand the intention of the Bella Bill or the amendment, I object to the bill in its entirety. For the sake of time, I'll give an example of section 37 of the bill. This section 37 of the bill is not acceptable as it shows a complete lack of knowledge of the structure of family as ordained by God. It limits the ability of God-fearing parents to train up the children according to their convictions. The bill gives the government the authority to allow or disallow parents to choose home education. The bill specifically states that parents must apply and not just inform or register for home education, and that it is for the head of department to approve or to disapprove. Biblically, this is a decision that should lie with individual parents and not with government. I, as a parent, should not be asking for permission to educate my child. Government cannot dictate to me how to raise my children, just as I cannot dictate to you how to raise your child or your, your, your son or your daughter, irrespective of the motive or intention. Section 37 completely undermines the authority of parents. It must be made clear that this, in this billable that parents have the authority to choose what the children ought to be taught and when, it is, when they ought to be taught to allow good parents to protect and teach the children. Anything less than this opens the door to unjust persecution of righteous parents. Understandably, however, parents that cause harm to child's welfare, to the child's welfare must be reported and investigated by the South African Child Welfare Services within the protocols already in place. But insisting on an assessor to come to the home annually by default is an invasion of privacy. We as parents should have the liberty to educate our children in a manner consistent with our faith as we are accountable first and foremost to God alone. Thank you. Uh, good day. My name is Namsankonyane. I'm from Award 35, representing Sanko as an organization, a civic organization. Um, I'm here uh, not to, as a Sanko uh, member, we're not, we're not supporting the bill. Uh, one, the section, the, the, the section, 
Okay, the one that uh, spoke, I think it's page five. Yes, it's page five. Uh, the one that says uh, homeschooling. We have a problem. The teachers are giving learners, like the great art learners, a lot of homework, like page 10, like 10 uh, pages. And then they, they're expecting us as parents to assist the learners without uh, explaining further what, what's supposed to be done in the homework. And another thing, we not in support with the one that's put with uh, its citizenship as in like uh, un, uh, documented uh, citizens uh, to be to be like uh, allowed in school. So that is why we're not uh, supporting the bill. Thank you. Dimelang honorable members, my name is Lali and I am a homeschool Lali Morava and I'm a homeschool mama. I've been doing it for at least seven years now. And I am as black and as African as they come. I'm also a member of the Houting Association for Homeschooling and the African Legacy Home Education. No one but my children and my convictions have sent me here. I don't support the Bella Bill overall, but I'm here to speak only about Clause 37. As an African, I'm convinced that homeschooling is the oldest form of education and the most natural way of learning for kids. It's also an extension of parenting. I decided when I was a teenager that if I ever had kids, I would homeschool them. It is important for me that my kids should be raised to know who they are as Africans. Our current school system is narrow and Eurocentric and disregards the fact that academics are just one aspect of whole person development. I don't want my kids to be indoctrinated by, by a system that seeks to strip away their Africanness and turn them into good servants of Western globalization. I'm shocked to see so many Africans in support of a system and a bill that seeks to divide them. If you didn't know African child, mama or papa, the Bella Bill promotes a decidedly un-African agenda and your support of it shows how deeply the indoctrination goes. All of you who are here, I ask you to support homeschooling. It promotes basic African values, things such as respect for elders and strong community bonds. It instills character in children. It teaches them that education happens everywhere, not just in schools, not just by so-called experts. That education is more than just passing exams. If you're concerned that my children will fall through the cracks, don't be. As homeschooled ch children, they're allowed to learn at their own pace and their own way. They have an insatiable love for learning, not just predetermined school subjects. But to assure you that our children are learning, we will happily submit a learning portfolio which includes all the one million photos of the Lego structures and cooking adventures they engage in. I'm happy also to submit forms of notification, not registration. Don't make me ask for permission to parent my children. If the government can trust me to feed my kids, it should trust me to teach them the basic math. The government's obligation to make sure, it's the government's obligation to make sure that every person receives a basic education should not now be turned into a government right to dictate how and what my kids should learn. It should not be elevated above my kids' paramount interests, which are constitutionally protected. Instead, the state must broaden its own definition of home education. Home education has opened up a whole world of possibilities for us. My kids get to participate in society more than school kids do. They get to interact with all kinds of people, not just their own classmates. They get to be part of real life, not just the curated version. The restrictions imposed by Clause 37 are for the comfort of the state, not the best interests of children. This cannot be how a law is approached in a democratic state. Please remove this clause from the bill, go back to the drawing board, do your research, and don't just assume homeschooling is just for one type of group of people. Don't impose a harmful law. Thank you, thank you. My name is Thalia Prigger. I am a co-founder of Riverstone Village 192-488 NPO. I reject the Bella Bill. There is a problem. The DBE can't register alternative schools. We were unable to get the form, not from the gov.za website, nor by direct request from the correct office. But even if we could have acquired a form, current registration requirements 
are modelled so completely on the DBE's own approach that registration would still be impossible because of the number of requirements that are not relevant or do not fit our approach. The proposed solution in the billable is to give excessive power to the minister, and it threatens founders with jail time for not registering an alternative school that they start. A much better solution is for the DBE to work together with alternative schools and their founders to work out how to make it possible to register. Such collaboration would lighten the load on the DBE and bring a diversity of educational choices to suit all different learning approaches. Children are all different and learn in different ways, and different education options work for different children. It might be difficult for the DBE to figure out how to register multiple different alternatives. Rather than allowing the DBE to avoid their obligations by threatening alternative education founders with extra jail time, the billable should be amended to oblige the DBE to collaborate with those founders to make it possible to register their alternative. Thank you. San Bonani, Dumelang, Kuyamadach, good afternoon, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members. My name is Gideon Pereira. I'm a Christian. I'm also a homeschool alumni, Otay schooler, old, old homeschooler. Um, I object to the Bella Bill uh, in its entirety because I'm against. Um, speci sorry, I'm against the Bella Bill that's being proposed in its entirety. I specifically reject, specifically reject Clause 37 with regards to home education, and I will support why I say so. I, but I reject the bill in its entirety because I'm against taking away rights from the parents and giving it to the states with regards to public schooling. School boards consisting of parents, etc., etc., should have the power to decide over school matters, not government. I'm also against the selling of alcohol for raising funds or any other purposes in schools, as Clause 8, I believe, proposes. The Bible says, Woe unto him who puts the bottle to the lips of his neighbor. It says in Habakkuk um, 2 verse 15. Um, woe unto him who drinks strong drink himself, but also woe unto him who puts the bottle to his neighbor. I oppose any clause that gives the head of department power to make regulations without revealing what those regulations are. Clause 37 gives the power to do this, and I ask that it be uh, removed. We want to know what are the regulations. Uh, the regulations can't just be made without um, declaring what they are. The billable will give the head of department great power to make regulations as he, she sees fit. It gives the power to the head of department and it takes away from the people and from homeschoolers. Um, I, I also propose if, if, if the Minister of Education can make regulations without um, declaring them, she can, for example, say that vaccinations could be made on children without consent of their parents. And I propose, propose a, a protection of uh, conscience that will allow such children to still um, get an education. With the formulation of White Paper 1, there was a group of homeschoolers that contributed to the formulation of the homeschool section. Hence, the South African Schools Act of 1996 made provision for and protected parents', parents rights to homeschool their children in line with their convictions and belief. 
I don't believe that Clause 37 reflects the views of homeschoolers. Homeschoolers were consulted in 1996, and that was the regulations and solution they suggested. What is the reason for change? I do not see a reason for change. If I judge by the support and cheering of the homeschoolers yesterday and today, I do not see that homeschoolers, the majority of homeschoolers... Mr. Perera, thank you. Next. Tobela na kalina ke nna montsha tintswane ke nna moetsa pele wa baswa ke tswa mogatlong yo o ka Alexandra um water and sanitation forum fa ke emet ke a ke dumelana le ntho ya lena pili ya lena fela ke ne ngongorego asi asi ke ke bone taba ya sanitation ka ga letse ba gore sanitation ke yona ya tshe dingwe tsa school tshe o di bopa go school e fela me hlenya matjatsi ya bana ke bona ba itswa schoolong ka pela a fa bana ba rena ba bolokegile na moetsa pele ka mogolwa ka ke gopela o e hlokomela taba ya sanitation di toilet tsa rena ga tsida loka ga di a ya ma ka go hlweka a ke bone bana ba rena ba yona metse a o a hlokilego ka fao ba fiulwa tshelete ba school go reng di jojo tanki di be gone le rena re fela re donita ke le di sepe gore bana ba rena ba hlape matsogo mara ga ke bone se wese dirwa ka le khatlong la education moetsa pele tsenelela bana ba rena ba kotseng bana ba rena ba ntshwa skolong pele nako e ya ya gore skolong se tshwe e tia a fa le tlotsenya le tsogona ke gopela gore le fele le hlokomela malotsi lona a nyoga a malotsi a go hlaka a go tsona le boli kholela le bo diarrhea tsenelela ntsentsha le tsogo mo wetsa beng ya sanitation ka ga ke le tswa mo khatlong wa water and sanitation re a gopela gore ga le dira le fele le hlokomela le bitswa go le mo khatlo wa meetse gore le ona o fele o luthusha ka di act tsa bona gore bana ba rena ba gone go bolokega a ke bone gore re tlo ba le 100% rate pass ke bana ba fela ba itswa skolong ka pela ba re go metse ga gona metse ga gona jwang di jojo tanki di le gona le ka sempotse gore di toilet e he bana ba ka tshone go a di toilet bana ba ka gona go a di toilet ka metse ba ba re ke shago go hlapa matsa go ka wona ke gopela gore mo eta pele o lebelele o tsitsinkele kudu mo tabeng ya sanitation ka bya le ke re thobela Uh, I am Montati Ntswane and uh, I am uh, representing the Alex Water and Sanitation Forum. Um, I want to start by saying that I do support the bill, but I want to emphasize that uh, there's no sanitation that's been mentioned in the bill and it is of serious concern because sanitation, it is the foundation of education. The reason that I'm saying that it is because children leave schools early due to lack of water uh, in the schools. Toilets are dirty, there's no drinkable water, and uh, there's no water to wash hands. Now, how do you expect a 100% pass rate in schools, whereas the children do not um, attend school for the whole day, but they leave early due to lack of water? So our children are in serious danger. Uh, there are also diseases such as cholera and diarrhea, which can only be compacted with water. But if there's no water available, it becomes a, it poses a danger to our children. So I also don't understand why you say that uh, uh, we cannot get water in schools, whereas there are water tanks. So please, dealership, look into this matter, more so when it comes to the water and sanitation, because it is the foundation of a school learning. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Thabo Mutlung. I'm from Alexandra. First, I'd like to say I support the bill in its entirety. Uh, second, because it allows for all the children to access education and have equal education. But I rise on the point of the language policy. It does not go far enough. While the Constitution recognizes that 11 languages, uh, but in schools, it less, it, the, the bill proposes that it, the discretion is left to the principal and the SCP and the community around it. I want to propose that the, in, in protection our 
black indigenous languages. We need to make sure that black indigenous languages are compulsory as schools, as per province, depending on which language is dominant in that province. So in KwaZulu Natal, Zulu should be taught in all public schools, and everyone should learn all in black indigenous languages. We should not be subjected to languages that of, of, of our colonizers. It, because in most cases, it's only English and Africans that, they, that is being taught under those languages. So I'm insisting that all black languages must be taught in, at school and as per province. Thank you. Fellow citizens above and around, I am Jana Clements, Oversight Committee and Training Materials Developer for UDEC, which is the European Democratic Education Community. Why not AFDEC or SAFDEC? Because it is not yet allowed to have a South African Democratic Education Community. I'm also a member of the international think tank FREE, which stands for Full Human Rights Experience Education. I reject the entire Bill. Number one. The Beelable prioritizes the best interests of bureaucrats over the best interests of the young people it is meant to serve. Number two, the drafters of Beeler did not respect or protect, let alone promote young people's right to participate in its development. Where unenforced laws and dash hopes already erode state authority, number three, Beeler just sets up for more failures. There simply isn't currently capacity to implement a properly resourced quality grade R, appropriate oversight of home education and microschools, and proper support for educators dealing with disciplinary challenges, bullying and hazing. Maybe most importantly of all, I've identified more than 60, 60 points of conflict between the Beeler Bill and the UNESCO Futures of Education guidance document. Futures of Education speaks to the ways that education worldwide urgently needs radical transformation within the next two decades. In other words, instead of a shelf life of more than a decade, the Beeler Bill is already past its sell-by date. My analysis suggests that Beeler could even criminalize people who dare to implement many of the future's recommendations for best practice. In brief, Beeler se seeks to centralize control and entrench top-down, one-size-fits-all, old-fashioned standardization and imposition at exactly the time that Futures calls for more flexibility, innovation, decentralization, community collaboration, and student empowerment. Having actively interacted since 2017, I can say that public consultation throughout the Beeler process has been tokenistic and highly controlled so far, which sits at the heart of the problem. I call upon the DBE to stop treating young people, parents, teachers, school boards, and communities as potential enemies to subdue and control, and instead embrace collaboration since it will take all of us pulling together in true synergy to make education in South Africa the best that it can be. Kia leboha, sia bonga, and thank you. Greetings, uh, respective honorable members, compatriots of uh, the nation, citizens, and civil society. I partially object uh, as uh, the rise to leadership is not centralized, but decentralized, as uh, we are adopting a notion that is uh, not uh, advocating for a robust teaching and learning. The curriculum itself it needs to be decolonized uh, as it is rooted uh, at the fundamental of a basic education, and that is the foundation of where the roots of our nation and creeds are stem from. So with that, uh, we are advocating for a transformational leadership which is transparent uh, in its laws and in its uh, statutory body so that 
there is a sound decision making amongst uh, civil society citizens and the leaders uh, of pedagogy education and not have a centralized approach to what is and then also have a decentralized approach because of we need to understand what we are moving from to where we need to be. So the transformation needs to also match the speed of our technology as it's moving. So the curriculum clearly needs to speak to that. Section one clearly needs to speak to that. And uh, section uh, 37 clearly needs to stipulate the criteria that will be assessed and monitored and evaluation based on uh, the regulatory and how basic education uh, is structured so that we don't have a gray line in interpreting uh, delegation of authority and uh, understanding that uh, the pedagogy and how it is structured needs to advocate uh, for a holistic approach, but not what you do on the left, you must also do on the right. So that speaks to the transparency, the pedagogy, the transformation in terms of uh, how is it structured and how is it aligned with the, the transformation that is happening currently with regards to technology. And we need to understand that the delegation of authority not, not to be autocratic or dragonistic, but it needs to be transparent. We need to have a mutual symbiotic relation where rudimentary approach should be advocated by the community, by the civil society, by parents, and also by active participants who are the vanguard of uh, these pillars of uh, basic education. We need to understand that where we are to where we need to be. We call for an utmost decolonization of basic education as it needs to be restructured and re-engineered to match the current Thank you. Let's, let's not draconize the time. Uh, what, what was your name? You did not... Uh... My name is Tato Sekhwele. Tato Sekhwele. Tato Sekhwele. Oh, Tato Sekhwele. Thank, Thank you very much. Good afternoon. I am Dr. Thomas Tolton. I work at Joburg Jen up the road. I oppose the Bella Bill, particularly Section 37. I represent my Christian community, my Christian family, and my local church. As a Christian, my concerns are regarding the lack of detail in the bill, which leaves room for wide interpretation and later broad application of laws pertaining to homeschoolers. I perceive this bill to be a potential threat to my God-ordained freedoms and responsibilities and an offense to Almighty God. The bill assumes governmental authority over all learners, a biblical jurisdiction which God has given parents over their own children with great promise and at great cost. Parents have the authority to choose what material is to be taught and when it is appropriate to teach it. We do this responsibly, reverently, and selectively so as to raise our children in the fear and instruction of the Lord Jesus Christ. We strive to produce adults with godly character and great societal contribution as a Christian witness and testimony. All policies proposed by the bill that impose on this God-given authority are ungodly. The potential refusal of the HOD to register a child as a homeschooler would be an unrecognized, unauthoritative, and unacceptable decision. The assessment of consultants to ensure a standard non-inferior to that of the national curriculum statement may be intended as a noble proposition to protect learners from bad education, but we recognize God's assessment and superior biblical standard. This would be an unwelcomed intrusion of government into my privacy and over my Christian God-ordained authority as a parent to teach my children. I fear a ploy to control curricular content and gradually outlaw Christian, Christian Bible-based content at least there is no evidence in this bill that protects homeschooling Christian citizens from this threat. As such, the authority and assessment of a consultant is biblically unrecognizable, unacceptable to the Christian community. God-fearing Christians will not comply with this. Biblically, full authority in the education system lies with the parents until this is proxied to a school and a teacher by a consenting parent. To assume authority not consented to by each individual parent in the ways proposed in this bill is a forceful invasion into God's ordained family structure. Christians must obey government, yes, unless the law of God is contradicted and opposed. Please consider this Christian plea. 
I pray you will recognize God's instruction and remember his warnings and the examples of nations who ignored his law and were made to fall. May God be praised. May our people, you, me, repent and believe. May our country prosper as God's servants. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Next. Yes, uh, thank you, Chairperson of the session. And good afternoon to everyone present here today. My name is Raymond Libelo. I represent Alexandra from the Parliamentary Constituency Office. Uh, Chair, I came here with one point, uh, but the latter speakers influenced me to speak on this issue that I'm going to raise now. South Africa is upon the most undivided society in the world. And according to my knowledge, Chair, what government seeks to do is to integrate society. And part of doing that, Chair, is that we have to meet from different backgrounds, different cultures, so that we can learn for the sake of growing the country for the better. I want to oppose the view of homeschooling by saying that homeschooling seeks to divide society instead of uniting it. <clears throat> but second to that, Chair, I want to say that I, Raymond Lebelo, fully adopt and agree with the bill as presented to us. I just have one issue that I have to raise particularly with the, the powers bestowed on SGBs, uh, mainly focusing on procurement and appointment of educators. To say that the SGBs have become political, they've become functional to such an extent that their decisions compromise the quality learning and teaching of our students and learners in our schools. So therefore, when it comes to decisions of procurement and of appointment of educators, can we at least consider that when those decisions are taken, parents must form part of those decisions, either through a special general meeting where parents are also going to have a say on who do they want the principal to be and how the structure of the educators must be. So that's my, my, my submission, Chair, but otherwise I do uh, support the bill in its entirety. Thank you. Uh, afternoon. Kamala Mdungufu is I'm from the Orange Farm. Uh, I partially support it uh, a With the following, with the following points that I, 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 I will fully say they must be enacted as the laws. Uh, we say in the uh, sports is playing a very important role in the stimulation of. A physical mind in, in terms of learning. And we would say, I would say the sports must be compulsory. Because in a colony, say, between the townships, you'll see in the Abantuana Mabapumis colony, they will go out and there are numbers without even participating in the sports courts. We have the facilities that are being, that are dilapidated. In the schools, they never used, they never been used or utilized accordingly. Uh, about tennis, but in land or tennis court and all of that. I never seen anyone in, uh, in my local school playing in tennis. Therefore, we're saying the DBE must therefore absorb 
or maybe deploy the coaches permanently in the schools to teach those, uh, to coach in those sporting coaches that are not fully participating in the schools. And their facilities are there, but they are not being utilized. So we therefore request that it must be compulsory or enacted into a law. Uh, the, the coaches that needs to be uh, adopted in the schools or absorbed in the schools must be qual uh, proper qualified schools or those are, that are given a prior reco uh, recognition of learning. Those that knows how to coach but they don't have proper qualifications. They must be absorbed in the schools as well. Uh, the second one, Chair, will be that to offer safety and security in our schools. We have a high rate of violence in our, in our township schools. It's a well-known fact. And every time when someone is being stabbed in the schools, we'll have the MEC or whoever the minister come into schools, probably for publicity stunt or so on. But we need an action. We need uh, the law that will be an Thank you, thank you. Chair Leba, thanks. On a 14 second extra. Uh, I'm now in this section. And okay, at least I got a little more like a comma more to hold that too. So, okay, at least I know. I remember more right here. One, I read him two, three, all right, all right. I'll tell you, represent four, all right. Five, six, all right, seven, eight, all right, nine, ten. Have I not pointed at you before? All right, eleven. Have I not pointed you? No? You look familiar, 12. Let's go. Let's, uh, those who, who have not been pointed, let's write. No? Sorry? Oh, okay. Kimango, how much? We have a lost and found here. No? Somebody lost a phone. Uh, I'll keep it. When you um, uh, Ray Melepe, Nado Ikins and Hapak, so it's a minor. It's fine, you'll, 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 you'll be there. <clears throat> There's somebody who has lost a phone. Uh, I have it with me, ne? Uh, it was found somewhere this side. So when that person uh, comes, they must, they, must, they must come to me. Yeah, area number one. Area number one. Number two, so that there's an extra person who pointed at themselves. Mm, I don't know who's that person. Okay, thank you. My name is Dimaka Tomaritzela. I'm the member of the African National Congress. I come from Ward 27 in Deep Kloof. Uh, I've had some interaction with most of the SGBs and I've realized that in the work that they are doing, there are um, interventions that are needed. Therefore, I support uh, the bill because it seeks to clarify some of the clauses as contained into SASA Act and also other pieces of legislation that 
doesn't give a direction of how some of the things need to be um, implemented. Um, yeah, since I, I have pointed on the issue of uh, the SDB, the bill seeks to improve SDB members' accountability through declara uh, uh, declarations as mentioned in Clause 14, enabling the HODs to investigate school financial records and limiting SGB powers where capacity is inadequate, and also intervening in terms of provision for support to schools through Clause 17 on the withdrawal of one or more functions of the SGB and address challenges which vary per school. The bill empowers the HOD for equitable access for schooling and the inclusion of diverse South African in schools. It's also critical for social uh, transformation SGP powers to determine the school's language policy are critical with the approval of the HOD to ensure inclusivity within school policies as stated in Clause 5. The bill enhances the management of the undocumented um, learners to ensure such learners are assisted. As per Clause 4, this requirement is critical also to protect learners' uh, uh, rights. The bill provides the school attendance, the bill provides that school attendance is compulsory from grade R up to grade 16, which will improve learner preparation and resource support for grade R learners. With this one, I also want to make an Thank you, thank you. With that one, we're closing. Next. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Oprekwati. I'm from Zone 1 in an area called Orange Farm. Uh, as NASCOP, Soweto region, we are saying we cannot afford to not to support this bill as it advances the transformation agenda of our education in South Africa and that of a black child in general. However, we support it with amendment. Uh, number one, um, is that of uh, language policy, uh, section six of 84. Our minor problem is there, is when you are saying uh, language policies can be, li it's limited to one or two. Uh, our view is that that gives an advantage to an African-speaking people. Hence, at some point, actually, they've monopolized that, where you will find uh, schools or universities that are taught by Africans, because they are using that one or two. So we are saying, please, look at that because uh, it reverses the gains that we have gained after 1984. We view that as a segregation by its forms. So we are saying that must be looked at. Uh, the last one is section 21 of 84. Uh, the one that talks of uh, giving powers to the HOD in terms of procurement of the LTSM. We are saying that you are creating a problem. 
because already if you ask yourself who is the HOD at the level of the school, then you are saying you are giving powers to a certain individual to procure. As you are saying, please, we are already having a problem with that regard in our schools. So, I submit. Thank you. Um, Menier. Menier. Did, at the beginning, what did you say? Did you say you support or not support? As National Skill School of Governing Bodies in Greater Soweto, we support the thank, bill. Thank you very thank much. You. I wanted you to clarify because I thought you said it will be wrong not to support. So I wanted you to, to clarify. Thank you very much. Next. Uh, Dumela. Ali Monaki Selom Ziri Harudi, social justice activist, also Muruti Kokere Kenya Fora, United Reform Church. I partially support Bella and Tlense Malwa. Yapili Harif Manadi Makeshini Arona, Rirbeli Mohutwing Nahaburona, Ekopanis Chab, Aolo, Batubasa. Itikanela. Moile ngohore bache so di kolong tse kopani tui. Moile ngurubatse wa kima tishere ke kopaore muso ushabane le tabaye. Discrimination against persons with disability. Engo hape abo we di. We need baba suyulu bona ba kene di kolo koma keshini. Ba kono experience the challenges so bad wa bazo. Bao ileng hore ba iphumana ba le ka ro tsona re hloka ba ba sweu ba tla ba tlo ruta dikolong tsa batho ba tso e ska ba fela rona batho ba tso re ya dikolong tsa bona me ho shejwe le taba hape ya go bene le a content code of conduct e leng hore HOD wa BED o hlokomela hore all this document is a code of conduct dikolong ha di thuntetse bill of rights and also the QLTC, kile muile hore hanga ataka aru di kolo tsarona, harina baruti harina di social worker, di psychologist, rekopa hore muso shabani leta ba ya hore ukrite di postuze noka aru di kolo hutisa butizo babo tu ka aru oshab, me ya bujwa la rehata kama uto, hariba tu ba ning haruba tu rutas chaba. Selling or real go school on Jonah Basaba Tao and Emwe Kitabaya corporal punishment Nala Ping Wanaka Tamila Tsuri Kimwana Nagin Tatua High. Our Tamia Ori Ebe Vice Versa Nagifi to Emwana and then Yenabe Mutsuadiwak. Eno Kiri corporal punishment Ihutikori Kolo. One Kika Hoba Navaruna, Kori Kolumbanya Tsama Tiche. Litengi Salebale Ori. Re khali mele mati shegas na mbi saro bobo. Ati nga linjualo ele nguhura soko fataba na miki re ai partially support the bella. Thank you. Thank you. Next, uskale wa la ubuella le chomita kumole ne. Hello, uskale wa la ubuella le chomita kagar. Yes. Good afternoon, my name is Dubalo Ngobo and I am 12 years old. I object clause 37 and I request that the bill be scraped, scrapped and more research be made that will enable freedom to home education. I have been homeschooled all my life and I believe that my parents are my best teachers. God instructed my parents to homeschool me and, I gave, and gave them a scripture, Isaiah 54 verse 13. All your children shall be taught by the Lord and, shall, and, and great shall be the peace of your children. So far, I can say I have experienced peace in my homeschooling. Why? I get to learn at my own pace. I get to learn according to my learning style and interest. My learning is not limited to only academics, but includes my spiritual growth and, pra and practical life skills. I would like to mention that because of homeschooling, I learned to, I learned to read and write at the age of three. 
I could write my name and surname at age three because my mom taught me to read and write small words. Homeschooling has allowed me to explore my interests his of, is of history, horse riding, singing, netball, and sketching. I can do all these because I'm not subjected to formal school programs. Homeschooling has kept me free from bullying and negative pressure, which has helped me to build a good self-esteem and a love for learning. My experience with socializing has been good. I have made good friends in the homeschooling community, and we share the same experiences with home education. Because of homeschooling, I do not find it difficult to have conversations with people that are more mature than me. My mom and dad have made time for me with my education, and they have been very supportive with me. People used to ask me why I do homeschooling. I never had the answer, but now I do. The, the school system teaches children to memorize information that they'll forget when they graduate. But as a homeschooler, I have been, I am taught according to my interests, then the information that I learn, I'll be able to apply in the future. My eldest sister has finished matric with a bachelor's degree, and if my parents could achieve that with her, then I believe that I am in safe hands. I trust my parents with my education and not and I don't trust a stranger with my education. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Emma Khanyan Ausine. Emma Khanyan Ausine. Can we, there's a request uh, for interpretation of the speaker before the young girl, because there were extracts uh, where he spoke Sesotho, so can you please uh, help? Yes. Uh, <coughs> yeah, the, the Reverend said his name is uh, Reverend uh, Sello Matiri, and he's from the church that is called Fora. So he said he supports the bill, and the problem that um, uh, he thought about when considering this bill is the problems in the townships. There's uh, children who are disabled. Those children, they are very much uh, ridiculed. They are also facing discrimination. So the uh, authorities need to take care of that or also consider that as they are processing with the bill. We also need uh, white people to uh, come to our schools also to teach us not all the time that our children, they go to their schools and they, don't, they, and they do not come to our schools so that also uh, we can have them in our schools. On the other hand, what I've realized is that in our schools we do not have psychologists, we don't have uh, social workers and the uh, uh, pastors as well, of which uh, if that could also be uh, taken into consideration, it will be of great pleasure. The third point that he mentioned is that the, when it comes to alcohol, the clause uh, pertaining alcohol, by all means, he said they reject it. Uh, they will not accept a, a such kind of a clause. And then also the matter pertaining the uh, corporal punishment, he said in his, house, in, in his household, uh, the child needs to know that he is the father and the child is the child, so it mustn't be vice versa. The child needs to respect and listen to the elders or his or her parents. And also, lastly, he's, he mentioned that we also have to uh, reprimand the teachers who are taking advantage of the children in our schools. Thank you. No, thank you. He said he partially supports uh, the bill. Uh, next. Itumeleng Matole from Ward 35. I support the bill appeal. They could not hear your name. Please start afresh. Itumeleng Matole, Ward 35. I support the Bila Bill, which seeks to enhance the organizational efficiency of the basic education system to improve school governance, leadership, and accountability, transforming education services, and protecting vulnerable groups to ensure learners' well-being and access to learning. The legacy of colonialism and apartheid has entrenched spatial inequalities and poverty. 
creating systemic inclusion and requiring Parliament to continuously arm legislation to respond to the changing, to the changing conditions. Uh, we as African National Congress, we support the pillar bill uh, address uh, amongst others. Firstly, it's deteriorating learners school performance and dropping out through clause three, which call to enhanced monitoring of school attendance by educators, principals, and school governing board. And addressing misconduct in schools through clause nine, which clarifies what constitutes an act of serious misconduct. And then number three, the bill seeks to improve SGP members' accountability through declaration through clause 14, enabling the head of the Department of Investigate School Financial Reports and limiting SGP powers. Where capacity is inadequate is an intervening provision to support schools through clause 17 on the withdrawal of one of the function of an SGP address challenges, which vary per, per school. And then coming to Indabaye, Yojuala is going so Uh, we're back. We wanted to intimidate you, so. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Yeah, you can continue. Are we fine there? Yeah, you can continue. Thanks, Chair. My name is John City, representing SATU. We support the bill and would like to make the following submissions and or recommendations. Clause four on learner admissions amending subsection five of SASA. We are saying there should be provision that will be able to unlock stalemate between the HOD and the SGP with regard to school policies, uh, admission policies. From the transformation point of view, there should be an accommodation to address issues of learners who were previously disadvantaged. In an event that you find a, a domestic worker staying near the school, which is a former model school, model C school, is highly unlikely to gain admission on the basis that they may not be able to afford school fees. We further recommend that uh, admission requirements and procedures be legislated to address issues of equity and access. On the same score, the quintile ranking of schools, we, we are making submission that let it be reviewed. It was done about 24, if not 26 years ago, and the status quo in the communities has drastically changed. On clause six, amending section 6A of SASA, we have got the following questions. Does the minister not have powers to appoint advisors? Is there a need to legislate the appointment of agencies? We recommend that the process of appointments be transparent. We also want to say let's guard against making education a commodity. We may not have to privatize education because to date, we are sitting here with suffering from the damages incurred by colonial education because somebody decided the form of education that we must have. 
on clause 8, the sale of alcohol on school premises, amending section 8A of SASA. Chair, we are of the view that there should be complete prohibition of any dangerous objects, including alcohol and any other illegal drugs on school premises. Therefore, we submit that this clause be removed. Lastly, Chair, we are making a submission, as you have made this call that you, must, you would, like, would like to hear the, the, the people. Please create a platform wherein you must hear the people on the ground after having passed legislation. A platform when you revisit norms and standards for school infrastructure, norms and standards for school funding. We are sitting in a dilapidated school. School funding does not influence, inform the exact things that are happening in the school premises. Post-provisioning model, one is to 60 learners. That is practically what's happening now. So as you visit schools, you'll realize that the legislation passed practically what is happening. It is not in line with legislation. Thank, Thank you. you. Good afternoon, uh, honorable members. My name is Gerdes Himan. I represent my family. I reject the bill in totality, and specifically also clause 37. The word of God instructs families to raise their children in the training and admonition of the Lord, to teach them, to educate them diligently according to the word of God. When you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up, all of the day, in other words. This God-given task is precious and it is most sacred and rightly falls under the parental authority of the fifth commandment, honor your father and your mother. God has given this authority to parents, not the state. Mothers give birth to children, not the state. Parents are ultimately responsible for the education of their children. The Lord Jesus will hold us parents accountable. And he will also hold accountable anyone who hinders children coming to him. And anyone who interferes with this God-given task. It should not be the responsibility of the state to regulate education. Homeschooling allows for Christian freedom of conscience. Again, such freedom of conscience is something the state may not regulate. All areas of life belong under the authority of Christ, and parents are obliged to teach their children and integrate a Christian worldview into all subjects. Homeschoolers can assess the needs of each child and adapt the approach uniquely to each child. It has been proven that homeschoolers frequently graduate earlier than their peers who go to school, precisely because they do not follow the norms of the group. Homeschooling allows for better individual care. A classroom full of 30 to 50 people cannot be compared to a household where children are individually instructed with love and care. A Christian home focuses on God honoring mastery, not merely passing subjects. The assessment of homeschooled children are also continuous and individualized according to the model that the Lord Jesus used with his own disciples, whom he knew intimately and whom he instructed intimately. And it's the same model that many homeschoolers follow. Homeschooling protects children from bullies and abuses of fellow children and incompetent teachers. It is also a practical safety concern for, for many children have died in pit toilets at school or have been sexually abused while their parents were not present. The best interest of a child is surely with the parents and belongs in the sacredness of the home. A bureaucratic gov government body, far removed from the intimate realities and needs of the child, is not the solution. Oh, thank you, thank you. Sorry. Okay. Good afternoon. 
Um, my name is Audrey Matuna. I'm from Ward 36, and I represent the ANC, and I'm in the ANC Women's League. I'm in the branch executive committee in my ward, and, and I'm happy to be here, and thank, thank you very much for the opportunity. I partially agree with the bill. Um, the reason I, I partially agree is that uh, some of the things like um, the HODs, I want to protect the HODs because they have too much work on their plate, on their hands, sorry. And every time uh, there's school visits and all that, most of the time you'll find that they're having a backlog outstanding uh, submissions because of like too much paperwork and running around the school checking all phases. So in terms of uh, school finances, we have, an, uh, we have uh, treasurers from the, H, uh, from the SGP, we have financial offices, which, can also, which, can, which the school can also organize the auditor to help them uh, keep track of the financial matters of the school. So, so the, HO, the HODs have too much work in their hands. And uh, also, I'm, a, I'm against, no, I'm, I'm against co corporal punishment. Uh, I wonder if there could be a, maybe a, a, a nicer word for corporal punishment uh, instead of phasing it all away. Uh, the, the, there should be some form of uh, discipline at school for these kids because these kids, because the learners, they're misbehaving. I, I will tell one example what happened to one of the schools in, in White City. Uh, there was this child misbehaving. He's a grade seven learner. He was misbehaving so bad that uh, every time he was called to the office. Thank so you. That, okay. Next. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Tebo Hokosa. I'm full in support of the bill that has been introduced by the Basic of Education. Uh, but firstly, I want to elaborate more on the fact that uh, we have people living with disability who are physically challenged and uh, you find that uh, they are not considered, basically, when it comes to the registration of the school, because uh, let's say the application registration is opening, and then you'll find that they'll say no, they won't be able to take the kids that is physically challenged at that school. So it means sometimes it can stay at home maybe for two years instead of going to the crash so that they can get education as other kids. So. I think you need to consider that. And the other thing, I'm full, I, don't dis I fully disagree with uh, homeschooling because homeschooling, it encourages more racism. I'll say that because just imagine the kids spend 12 years on his home with his family. And then when it's time to go to work to, so that he can socialize with other people, that kid become very arrogant towards other children or towards other colleagues. So this it cannot be tolerated in our country. All of us, we must be accountable. We must be registered under the basic education because we are, the aim here is to build South Africa, not to separate South Africa. If you cannot, if you cannot accept that, that means you don't want to build South Africa. You, you are the one of those people who, who, are, who are more emphasizing on racism, where we see people are uh, racist at work. They can't even co work with colleagues appropriately. So please, this is wrong, guys. And uh, thirdly, uh, I want to focus more on the schools. Our schools in our location is very, is, is very untidy. So we like the education to consider every time to come to our schools. They should not come to our schools only when there's a funeral, when a kid has been stepped. We want to see them always there. And the, the visibility of the police, they are not there at the schools. 
That's the truth. So, uh, and the other thing, I'm very disappointed because I'm here today as someone that is blind, and I don't see anything that is covering us. Firstly, I want to say I'm also disappointed because uh, we need to, as they say, the Constitution, that the South African Constitution represents all of us equally, those who are physically challenged and those who cannot speak for themselves. But today, this font is not good for me. I'm supposed to get a three font so that I can be able to read what is written here. So please, no, thank you. We apologize. Yeah, uh, my brother, uh, I'm going to ask them if we have Braille version so that uh, they can give you. Uh, yeah. Uh, we, we will attend to you just now. Next, yeah. Um, thank you very much. My name is Tulo Felo Rakhotu, a member of the African National Congress, Ward 60. I support the bill, and I would like to make the following recommendation or rather submissions. Um, I would like to recommend that grade RR be made compulsory as this places children in more secured and regulated environment. The bill says it must be grade R, so I'm proposing that they make grade R and grade RR. I also would like to recommend that we absorb the grade R and the grade RR practitioners and afford them the same privileges and same benefit as all teachers. I would also like to make the recommendation that uh, we take SGPs on continuous training as they will be handling public funds. So they, I think they spent three years or four years in their term. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about that. So I think in the four years of their term, they must go on continuous training as this will secure parents and will make sure that the school funds are run, are run in a good way. Lastly, I would like to comment on corporal punishment. The government took away corporal punishment, but they did not substitute it with anything else. Now, this places teachers at an a disadvantaged situation because they cannot um, discipline the learners. I would like to recommend that the government please substitute corporal, corporal punishment with something else. As we all know, the society that we live in does not allow for learners to be out of school premises. So the government only said if a learner is misbehaving, they must be suspended from school. So if you suspend a learner from school, you are actually putting them at a disadvantage because now they're going to be in the street and they're exposed to rape, abuse, and all sorts of things. So I want our government to sit down and think properly about this, but I support the bill. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next. Tulu, uh, you don't want uh, translation to... Oh, okay. <laughs> that was on a lighter note. Continue. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I'll, my name is Tambachira uh, I, I I'm coming here to represent uh, Sipima Parliamentary Caucus, uh, which is in Protea Glen, and it's, it's, it's for zone four. It's for zone four. ANC. I come from Ward 12, Chiawero, personally so. Uh, I'm here to support our deployees that we deployed in Parliament, uh, who happen now to be memorable members or honorable members. Uh, as you are here, I would like to thank you for this kind of process as members of uh, the Education Portfolio uh, Committee. Uh, an opportunity like this, it was scarce, especially during apartheid. So I would like to commend you for this process of public engagement or public participation. 
I further go on to support the bill. Uh, it's a very good bill. I will make a submission on the bill. Uh, as an ANC, if I come here and not support the bill, it won't be proper for me to do so. So we support the bill the way it is. The submission that I would like to make are the following. On the issue of uh, SGB members, especially those who are entering, who are, who are gonna be, who are gonna be members, who are members of SGB, my submission is as follows. There are situations whereby you find SGB members who are not active, who are not even aware on issues that has to do with aid governance. So my submission would be, it would be proper uh, for those people to qualify to have at least post metric qualification. Not to say I'm be sidelining others, but for the sake of school development within our communities. Uh, number two, I will also want to contribute on the issue of, of uh, language policy. There are instances where me members of community or children, they are rejected on the basis of language. Especially this happened in so-called former Model C schools or in areas where it's predominated by Africans. I'm speaking this as a former educator whereby you find learners not getting admission on the basis that on the basis of a language. So on that one, to me, is excluding learners to be part and parcel of or to join the schools in question. Thank you very much. Hello? Hello? You don't like this mic? Oh, okay. No, it's fine. Yeah. Okay. I'm Ilse van Ville. I am a very concerned citizen. I reject the billable in its entirety, but would like to address a specific point. My concern is that while bullying and sexual assault and rape are increasingly common in schools, even in primary schools, as can be seen from the Human Rights Watch on sexual violence in South African schools, it is clear that legal enforcement is not practicable Despite 2021 legislation banning teachers convicted of sexual assault from teaching for life, SAIS disciplinary proceedings addressed only 12% of reported sexual misconduct cases last year. Of these 19 led to convictions, yet only four were struck off the roll, only four teachers were struck off the roll indefinitely. A book authored by Sam Cowan called Brutal School Ties, interviewing boys, parents, and others affected in one of our most prestigious schools, if that's what we're trying to generalize, um, multiracial schools, showing, showed that this the um, exposure during 2009 and then in a saga that went on from 2016 to 2020 of extreme brutality and sexual assault within a particular school was just the tip of an iceberg which showed a culture of violence and sexual assault making a 23 cent year sentence for one man really just a scapegoating. Importantly, matriculants were shown as brutalizing new boys throughout the year. Now, this culture of violence and sexual violence 
I am hearing from everywhere is becoming far more general. Importantly, um, this culture of violence of, is kept silent by the threat of brutal retaliation and absolute shame at sexual victimization, a silence which apparently extends right up the line of authority. Silence prevents enforcement. Worse, when you outlaw initiation, which this bill does. Okay, thank you, thank you. Next. Continue. Good afternoon, Honourable Chair and Honourable Members. My name is Stacey van der Walt. I am a second generation home educator and I reject the Bella Bill in its entirety. Sometimes I go to sleep and the power is off. We do not have lights. I wake up and again it is dark. Somewhere during the night we have electricity, but I miss it. Now there is still no power. I wrote this speech in the dark by the light of my laptop. I get frustrated because we do not always have power, but I am encouraged because that doesn't make us powerless. Three years after homeschooling was legalized in South Africa, my mother started home educating my sister and I. She was a single woman and had to work in between two. I participated in my first protest as a 13-year-old child. My small family and I made posters which read, No to the CSE. No to learning material which would rob the children of this country of their purity. That was more than 20 years ago. Now the stats on CSE are in, and they are showing that, ironically, by teaching kids how not to get pregnant. Schools were actually showing kids how to get pregnant. I understand that global organizations like the UN place pressure on countries like ours to conform and push agendas through curricula. When we allow that, schools go from being places where kids come to learn to indoctrination camps. The South African government needs to say no to aid if the price we will have to pay is the innocence of our children. When the DBE imposed CSE and scripted lesson plans on schools, homeschooling went from being an alternative means to educate our children to an obligation. Sorry. Oh, sorry an extension and outflow of our faith. Religious freedom is still a protected constitutional human right as enshrined in our Bill of Rights, and we lay claim to that right. The Bella Bill is big on holding citizens accountable, but who is holding the government accountable? Perhaps they should spend less time figuring how, out how long they want to send parents to jail for for not registering, and more time on building schools and providing kids with basic resources. And teachers? Teachers should be invested in and given the tools they need to help their learners succeed. They should be empowered by curriculum they use. CAPS is just not cutting it. There are so many resources that we, as the homeschooling community, have discovered. And the best Thank ones you. are... Thank you. Uh, last round now, this side. I did say that uh, those I did not point, there's a table there, the back with forms. Uh, I some belief, go and uh, uh, fill them. Uh, number one, they are rendered. Number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight. Number nine, number ten, recent graduate, 
Number 11, number 12, let's go. <clears throat> uh, we can fill in the forms there. Are they still there, the forms? Uh, we, yeah, we can bring them. Those who wish to fill in the forms, uh, let's do so. When we're ready, number one. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Patrick Zulu. This afternoon I'm presenting like the Teddy Bear Clinic and uh, the Kensington Residents and Red, Pay Red Payers Association and also the South African Alliance, South African Alcohol Policy Alliance. We object like some certain sections like of the bill, but not in its entirety. Um, I will focus in this afternoon, I would like just to focus like on, on, on the issue of alcohol. We understand that the government is not intending like to give alcohol like to, to our children, but it, it merely wants like to use it as a form as, you know, of fundraising, um, like sell it to the adults, like when there are events and functions at schools. However, there are already problems in schools. We know that learners and adults are consuming alcohol. And this part of the bill will actually worsen the situation. It will make things worse. Having alcohol in school, it will normalize the use of alcohol, um, like in schools. We can, make, we, can, we can also make a reference like about Nyobeni Tavern in the Eastern Cape. Yes, uh, the kids were not, you know, like in the school premises, but the questions can be, what were the children doing like in a tavern? So we can see that actually um, when alcohol is normalized, children will abuse it. We don't want it to further normalize like the use of, of school, um, or, or of alcohol by children in our schools. In many communities, children are already exposed to, like, to the use of alcohol. We believe that schools should be alcohol safe. No alcohol at, at all, like it should be at schools. Maybe the, the last question that I can raise to all of us here, is it really correct to expect schools to fundraise through the sale of alcohol? Certainly, no. Um, the government can find like some alternative ways to actually like raise funds where like the funds like needs to be raised. In closure, we, advo we advocate we advocate for safer schools. We say no alcohols in our schools. Thank you. Uh, good, good afternoon. Uh, greetings to the honorable uh, members seated in front of me. Greetings to the house. Uh, my name is Don Wagasitia. I'm from Cebu King, and I'm here representing the kingdom of God, my family, Active African Christians United Movement, and the Thought Council. I am standing here on the strength of Proverbs 18:16 that says, giving a gift can open doors. It gives access to important people. Interestingly, Proverbs 18.16 has never said that your academia will bring you nigh kings and queens, but your gift. And now I can mention so many people that many of us have known, billionaires and millionaires who never went through the formal way of learning and yet have made themselves reputable names in society. And these have understood that it, was, it took their gift, their courage and grit to, to, to make a place for themselves in the world. And I stand here also refuting completely. Uh, we apologize for that technical glitch. 
uh, we hope is not uh, intervention. Uh, yeah, no, we, we live. <laughs> Will I have more time? <laughs> I have passed your time. I, I, I've passed your time. I'm sure I have extra time now. The devil is a liar. <laughs> we also understand as believers that this world is governed by Satan and that some of the institutions are governed by Satan and also the turning off of power right now may be an, a work of Satan. But we also know that the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent will take it by force. And it doesn't matter what decisions are made here. We will insist on certain things because though Christians believe that they should comply to governance, and yes, we do believe that, but we also understand that we are seated far above all principalities and powers. And this means that the government will not be on the UN shoulders, will not be on UNESCO's shoulders, will not be on the government's shoulders, but the government is on Christ's shoulders. And this is how it is. And we will, we will take this by force without fear. And we're not asking for permission from anybody. But we're doing this because we are believers. And we're doing this because we, we know the mandate we've been given by the kingdom of God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Next. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to greet the portfolio committee seated in front of me and everybody in the house. My name is Dihedi Lemotsipe, and I'm a homeschooling mother um, of a 13-year-old uh, and an 8-year-old um, girls. I reject the bill completely and I'd like to focus specifically on Clause 37. Homeschooling is a global concept that has been there for uh, many years and not unique to our context of a racially divided country. And I'd like to state this to the gentleman who spoke also earlier that it isn't that our children are educated at home that they are being um, separated from other racial children. There are children who go to school in a township and they've never had any interaction with a white person in their lives. And they only get to do that in the workplace. Regarding applying and registering with the department, I feel that there has, been, there has not been a proper consultative research that has been done fully by the department to understand home education and how it works. And I feel if that is to be done, it would create a better approach. The approach as it stands on the, uh, in the bill right now, it is flawed. The best interest of a child is known best by the parents of that child, not the Department of Basic Education. The decision to homeschool was because mainstream schooling was not the best we could give our daughters. So if the Department of Basic Education wants to regulate homeschooling with this approach, it will not be to the best interest of our children as it is their constitutional right. As parents, we do not need permission from the Department of Education. We do not need permission to be parents to our children. Regarding annual assessment, as a parent, I know my child's abilities, including academic ones. Annual assessment submissions are not acceptable, and I am not and, and uh, are not acceptable. And as a parent, I am competent to educate my children and as a result, competent to be the one who assesses their, their academic progress. The choice of curriculum is also the right of our family, the right of our, uh, our own right as parents to give our children the very best and not the government. Thank you. Thank you, next. The Honourable Chair and Honourable Members, my name is John McKenzie. I'm representing my family, and I, as the representative of my family and the father of my children, reject Clause 37. 
We are reminded in the Bill of Rights and the Constitution of our country that a child's best interests are of paramount importance in every matter concerning the child. As a father of three a few years back, following the retrenchment of my wife, we opted to homeschool the children due to the unaffordability of school fees. We were pleasantly surprised by the positive change in their attitude and manners within the family. Since the beginning of the journey, the children have blossomed in and of themselves. Truly, homeschool has been in their best interests. With regards to Clause 37, I kindly plead that the Committee and the Department of Education take time to understand home education and the many positive attributes associated with this form of education. Having perused the Bill, I am inclined to believe that the procedure set out in the Bill is just far too onerous on the staff of the Department of the Basic Education to monitor one child's progress. I believe the proposed Bill is too onerous for a family, a homeschool family. Therefore, I would like to make the following suggestion. I would suggest and recommend that a commission be set up, a non-biased commission, to into and investigate and report on the home education in the South African context. I would like to encourage home, uh, home school families to participate in the study. I would like to see engagement of the study with home education curriculum providers, the Pestalozzi Trust, homeschool associations and homeschool families with past and present learners to provide the necessary input regarding the study. The subjects of the study could be, and is not limited to, multicultural engagement of homeschooling. We have seen today that there's been some misconceptions about homeschooling. Another item is, what is successful outcome of homeschooling? Success is subjective and may mean something totally different to different people. Was the success based on CAPS or other curriculum? What assessments proved to be useful? Would registration and assessments of homeschool children overburden the workers and staff within the Department of uh, Basic Education? Is home education in the best interest of the child? Based on this study, the results will show a clearer and enlightened understanding, and an understanding will be known about homeschooling. Based on these, we could understand homeschooling much better. Based on thank the you. time, yeah, thank you. Next. No, thanks, Chair. Uh, my name is Mbongeni Mkunu. I'm from Soweto, Ward 52, Zone 8. Chair, I accept this democratic uh, representative bill amendments. They are very democratic, Chair. However, I do have some few uh, comments to make. Chair, some of us come <clears throat> from uh, communities where SGPs are only SGP for signatures. So, Chair, I propose that the bill seeks to uh, provide capacitation of SGP members in terms of ensuring that they fulfill their duties. Because I also note that the bill allows the HOT to, dis to, 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 to dissolve the SGP uh, where the SGP fa fails to perform their duties. However, Chair, if the bill allows the HOT to dissolve the SGP based on non-performance, it should also allow the, SGP, uh, the, the HOT to capacitate as, uh, the SGP members. Because if, if it's one-sided, where the HOT will only come to dissolve the SGP based on non-performance, and it also gives the HOT powers uh, to appoint a suitable candidate based on experience, then in that case, it should also allow the, uh, the HOT to, to, uh, to, to, to find suitable candidates through certain processes, Chair. So I would propose that the elections of SGPs, Chair, should be based on certain criteria and should be performed prior to the sitting of the parents in terms of application, accompanied by CVs, accompanied by uh, the process of shortlisting, Chair. Because the problem that we are having, we'll sit in a parent meeting and find parents who are not willing to participate in the SGP. And then we'll have those who are willing to volunteer. And those who are willing to volunteer, Chair, are the ones 
that uh, I'm sorry I would put it uh, this way, who are not capable of pe performing those, those ta tasks here. So that's, that's my submission in terms of capacitating of SGPs. Then on recusal of SGP members and any other member of the panel with regards to selection, procurement, and recruitment in the schools chair, I propose that can the, the bill be specific in terms of uh, the mechanism that can be used in terms of identifying uh, possible uh, conflict of interest? Because I see no situation whereby one willingly declares to say I have an interest or I have a family member who has applied in this one only to, 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 to allow the process to be fair. So maybe the bill uh, chair can provide further mechanism in identifying possible uh, conflict of interest in some of the processes. I think I'll stop there. But chair, again, we support these uh, democratic amendments to the bill. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Uh, good evening, uh, panel and the people in the hall. My name is Mama Kubega. I am the educator and I am a district official in my district in the Val. And I'm a member of NEPTOSA, a master's student in linguistics for African languages. Uh, I support the Bella Bill that is made. However, I have some comments to add. The first comment is with regard to the grade R, uh, making it compulsory. Yes, we appreciate that the grade R is going to be compulsory. However, we request that uh, we strengthen in ensuring that the practitioners are well trained because we know that grade, R, uh, grade R's, they are grade R's in formal schools and they are grade R's also in the preschools. And we are having a challenge there in the preschools because Ukoko at home just come and say, I can teach, and then they teach those children. And then we find it at all when those children arrive at grade one. So, and then again, we request that the people who are monitoring the curriculum then in those districts, as you are going to increase because I know the numbers are going to increase for those great art learners. We need <laughs> job creation. One person cannot stand in one district with 170 preschools as well as 98 primary schools with grade R and be able to monitor them in a year. That's not good enough for that person. He or she can't do justice. And then as for the language policy, uh, we request that for African languages particularly, resources be increased. When I say resources, I mean that uh, development of African language resources, not translation or reversioning from other languages, but development is very important. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Temi Somashere from Protea Clan Ward 135. I fully support the Bella Bill because the bill seeks to improve the SGP members' accountability through declaration of Clause 14. The bill also empowers the head of the Department for Equitable Access to Schooling and the inclusion of diverse South, African in, South Africans in schools is critical for social transformation. The powers of the SGPs to determine the school's language policy are critical with the approval of the HOD to ensure inclusive school policies as stated in Clause 5. The bill enhances the management of undocumented learners to ensure such learners are assisted as per Clause 4. This requirement is critical to protect learners. The bill provides that school attendance is compulsory from grade R, which, improve, which will improve learner participation and resource support for grade R learners. And also, one of my submissions is the committee to actually review the curriculum, because right now we really need a revolutionary curriculum shift. What I mean by that is that we need to scrap away with this current uh, pass mark that is being set, which is a 30% or 
in actual fact is an intelligence, it's an insult to our intelligence. So that uh, review on the curriculum policy and the pass mark is really important. And also try and shape our curriculum to the world that we want to see or the economy in which we want to build through including skills and artisans uh, learning courses in, in schools and also uh, include sports, arts and culture in schools because not everyone is in academia. So we find that there are others who are gifted in sports and in, in arts and culture. I'll, I'll end there. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Thank you, Chairperson uh, and the committee. My name is Lulu Malisa Pulwane. Uh, I'm coming from Ward 135. I'm the Chairperson of the ANC Women's League in my branch. So I'm here, I'm representing the subcommittee of Johannesburg, Science, Technology, Ed Education, and Health. Uh, Chairperson, we as the subcommittee, we, are say, we say yes to this bill. This bill will address the challenge regarding, regarding learners' ac access to quality basic education as some schools deny learners' admission. And we are saying yes to this bill that bill that will address the uncertainty about the home education legislation through clause 37, ensuring all learners are registered and their interests are, interest are protected by legislation and the department is so critical. We also want to say yes to this bill that will seek to enhance the management of undocumented learners to ensure such learners are assisted as per clause 4. This requirement is critical also to protect learners. Maybe before I finish, uh, Chair, just to remind the House that uh, I just want to borrow from the words from uh, Comrade Nelson Mandela when he said, open quote, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. I think our, 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 our government is still on the right track. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next. Good evening, all. Thanks for the opportunity. My name is Mulaba I come from Antioch Bible Church and as well representing salt and light in motion. And my position and our proposition on this bill is to scrap it and we reject it in its totality. There are a number of reasons why, but because of time, I'm just going to give you just a few. When one looks into section three, the, the, the just cause, in this amendment, it should include homeschooling as a just cause for not being compulsory to attend South African schooling system. In this way, righteous parents teaching their children at home will be protected from the wrong prosecution of up to 12 months imprisonment. It seems to be the reader of the bill that this bill is an attack to homeschooling in general and by not adding and allowing homeschooling. Clarity on the bill is needed to have compassion on the innocent and the righteous. Punishing the innocent is God, in God's eyes is grievous, injustice, and as well as misusing God-given role of government, as Romans 13 says. Government's core role is to uphold the sword, the justice, and fairness, not to education. Education is a parental role given by God as it is inherent with childbearing. Secondly, we're objecting when one looks at section 11, Point 10a, I quote, and to create an offense is in respect of the interpretation, disruption, or inherence of the school activities, close quote. Therefore, the government is not only forcing South African schooling system on our children, but also it's cutting off the hands of the parents to hold the educational system accountable. This is completely unacceptable. To advance the cause of uninterrupted and unhindered schooling activity, surely, 
it makes then sense to rather avoid disagreeing parents in schools, but rather accept their God-given responsibility, expectation, and command that content, methodology, period to teach, and teaching in itself is inherent in the, in the household daily. As Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 to say, it says, this bill then seeks to elevate government over parents in education. This bill infringes an ASAP, a fundamental right and prerogative, inevitably promoting parents' abdication of their God-given accountability. As Ephesians 6 says, teachers and teaches and outlines that the roles of husband and wives, the roles of children to, uh, and to children, thus must be protected by this government as well. The authority of Holy Scripture, the word of the living God, omnipresent and omniscient God, it is not government, it is Him, the source and the standards of all morality. Amen. Amen. Next. I greet you all in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you, Chairperson, for this opportunity. And I'd like to thank my counselor for affording me this opportunity. My name is Lebohan Ratlala from Dobsonville, from Ward 47. Um, I'm here representing, I would like to say, the nation, because there's a, I, there's a cry out there. Um, firstly, I'd like to speak about our learners. Our learners are burdened. Our learners are burdened. They are carrying a lot on their shoulders. That is why they are not coping at their schools. Um, not forgetting to say I partially support the bill. I partially support the bill in terms of, yes, there should be a penalty for parents who do not want or who deprive their kids from attending school or who deprive their kids the education that they deserve. But then the sad part is the parents are never present. We have absent present most of the time. Who, which parent are you going to penalize? Because we have child-headed families. Who takes care of those? Unfortunately, in our schools, we have educators who I would unfortunately say they are not equipped enough to realize the challenges that our kids are faced with. Our kids are going through a lot and our educators are putting our, our kids through a lot by name calling them, by body shaming them. And the corporal punishment, if it was in the past, I would say may it come back. Because the educators in the past, they were passionate with their job. Unfortunately now, an educator it's easy for them to say, I get paid at the end of the month. Whatever you do, that's your problem. The educators in the past, they cared about the future. But now we have a problem whereby they are, the ones that we have now, they only care about the check. So in our schools, yes, we have policies. Let's say, for example, there's a um, uniform policy. We expect learners to dress properly. I wish there was a policy, if there isn't, for our educators to be presentable when they go to school, especially high schools. They, they are educating learners who are of age that they will be enticed if a female teacher stands before them. Can you encourage our educators to dress properly? We cannot have an educator to be standing in front of our, of our little ones wearing revealing clothes. That one I close. And I have a concern when it comes to our language, Yasetswana. Dibukazarunasaswana, I've observed from, I think, from grade R to grade four, if I'm not mistaken, from grade R to grade. Setswana Saruna Hasetololo. It's not proper Setswana. So how are our kids going to be able to present themselves in their own language, yet it's not the proper language that they are being taught in? Please look into that. Look into that language. I hope it's thirdly. Um, how about I check out the language, the manner in which they speak to our learners? 
Thank you. They must check. My name is Kieran Prigger. I am 21 years old. I'm with Riverstone Village 192.488NPO, and I reject the Bella Bull. The Constitution of the Republic of South Africa says that a child's best interests are of paramount importance in every matter concerning the child. The Bella Bull does not represent the be child's best interests. The Bella Bull attempts to solve the issue of dropouts and non-attendees by coercion and threatening parents of children with jail time. This is a flawed approach. Parents are not the issue. School in its current form is. UNESCO says that dropouts are as a result of multiple issues, mainly not coping with the lessons. Other issues include bullying from peers and abuse from educators, bad infrastructure, lack of transport, and the one-size-fits-all thinking, and that only caps may be taught. How does the Bellable intend to solve these issues? By imprisoning parents. But imprisoning parents will not help the children cope better with, le with the lessons. If anything, it will make it worse. It will not solve bullying or abuse from educators. It will not solve transport issues. It will not solve bad infrastructure. It doesn't fix the one-size-fits-all problem. And it doesn't allow any curriculum other than CAPS. Essentially, the Bellable will make all of these problems worse. A far better approach to get kids to go to school would be to change schools so that kids, kids actually want to attend instead of trying to force them to attend by threatening their parents. Some changes that could be made include hiring better teachers, fixing bad infrastructure, fixing transport issues, imprisoning abusive educators, solving the issue of bullying, and giving children the freedom to choose what curriculum they want to follow. In summary, it is far better to make schools better so that children actually want to attend rather than punishing the parents for problems that are actually as a result of school in its current state. Do not allow the legislation to be abused to let the DBE get away with not fixing the actual problems with our schools. Thank you. Thank you. Last speaker, you can drop the phone. Uh, Relebuwe, uh, chairperson of the session, greeting everyone, all protocols of Kalibizo Kinatia Pualukwa Pen represent two major st uh, stakeholders in the country, the South African Youth Council and the NASGP, the National Association of School uh, Governing Bodies. One chair, we want to reiterate that we support the bill, but with the following amendments. One on section uh, six of SASA, point two, it must not read one or two languages. It must say two or more languages. Because once you say one or more languages, other schools we have seen, they will then opt for Africans. That will close a whole lot of African majority on the outside. Two, on section 6A, uh, we must amend from powers being given the principal to the SMT and SGP on the issue of people that can actually bring whatever uh, that may be used for demonstration inside the school facilities. In fact, the better option will be that the school must procure those things so that we don't have people coming with alcohol or uh, weapons for demonstration purposes. The school must procure and it will be kept in a storeroom or somewhere that it will only be utilized when it is needed. Three, on section uh, 25 of SASA, I think uh, one of the things that we'll then need to speak to is the amendment from one year to six months, especially when it comes to amending the issue of capacity building when uh, powers are taken from the SGP members. Four, on section 27, we reject that clause uh, for the current, uh, the, uh, the, uh, that clause that has been put there of powers being the uh, SGP being, or powers of uh, SGP reimbursing themselves being taken away. The current uh, SASA, which reads that the uh, SGP can reimburse parents or uh, SGP members, must uh, stay the way it is. On Section 18H, 
it should then read as such, SGP should disclose matters of financial interest in relation to the school, so that we don't have a situation where I'm told that me, my fiance, I need to disclose that I'm a board member somewhere, I do this somewhere. Those things are not linked to the functioning of the school. Can the limitations be uh, whatever that I'm doing should be limited, uh, the disclosement must be limited to what I'm doing at the school? On Okay, section 27, I've spoken about it. On section 29, can we remove the words reasonably practical and only leave uh, the part that says parent members working at the school can be the treasurer or the chairperson of the FINCOM? So that it is clear that uh, it is not the choice of somebody that the treasurer of the school must be somebody else. It must state clearly that it needs to be a parent of the child at the school. On section 37, chair, okay. Section 37, we are quite doing well on it. On section 38, A, point number three, I think the uh, budget processes are spot on. On section 38, uh, subsection two, we reject the amendment that says uh, payments must be made to state employees. By state employees will then mean people like teachers. Instead, we can have a better option that SGP members can be given a stipend or something of that sort. So that we don't have teachers being reimbursed by the SGP, but also we want to make an amendment that says SGP members must not uh, be reimbursed for tra uh, transport uh, costs that will live and get when coming to those SGP meetings. Thank On you very much. Uh, Let's take this opportunity to appreciate democracy. We were well behaved today. Many people had differing views to yours. You kept quiet. You only came to speak and share your views. And I think uh, let's give ourselves a round of applause. We are also giving a round of applause to those who have left. Uh, but there was democracy, and this is what Parliament is all about. We're here to listen to your views, so that at the end of the day, we're able to compile a report and submit it to Parliament, that this is what the people of South Africa have said. From here, we are not done. We are going to Ekurulene tomorrow, same process. And then from there on Monday, we're in Pumalanga, finishing what we could not finish uh, some time back. And then next weekend, we're in KwaZulu Natal, doing the same thing. Then from there, we'll be left with uh, uh, the three provinces, Western Cape, Northern Cape, and the Eastern Cape. So we are going to listen to the views of everybody, including the views that you have submitted here. And then we are going to filter it down. Then the report will be submitted to Parliament, where these members will debate for and against, based on your submissions. Then from there, Parliament will take a decision on what happens. So I thought I must just clarify that part so that we are clear on the process. You don't say, we did not explain to you that what is going to happen after a year. I want to thank you for being here with us. It's been a very long day. Uh, there, are some, there was one who arrived here uh, with the Kaiser Chief Jesus. I told him that later it's not going to be nice. Uh, the score, there is still one nil for now. Uh, it's about to be two very soon. Uh, Pirates leading. The game will end with Pirates 2, the other one 0. I told them in the morning, Principal. Um, so we want to, we are now at the end of our program. Uh, we are now at the end of our program. Um, we, we, uh, we've got nothing else to say. This meeting stands adjourned. Thank you very much. We must. We open with a prayer chair, and uh, we are because I had a lot of uh, people like me who are Christians 
who came here. So I think we must just get one to close for us in a prayer. Is that you with the phone? You are going to pray? Yeah? Okay, come. Ah, as funny politics. We just want you to pray. If you, if you want politics, please. Uh, in fact, speak there so that I can close your mic if you are not praying. Uenam Dali O Talom Kudunabo Koko no Koko Betu Sia Bongo to Slang and Sile Nam Sanje Bessestre Lugutige Uenam Dali Lessis with him Yama Nessis or Sabo Bonga Bacona Gule Lizwe, late Trans Africa Nis Londo Lose Nis Kumbuza Masigo Sinfonipe Thank you very much. Travel safely.